Hey, Laura, we're, we're just about to go live again, okay? Sorry about that. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my apologies for the uh, delay and the technical issues, but the uh, committee is in session now for our afternoon uh, session. During the declared emergency in the City of Toronto, Committee of Adjustment virtual public hearings are being conducted by electronic means through WebEx, an online digital platform and streamed on the C Toronto City Planning YouTube channel. These measures are necessary to comply with physical distancing requirements and in-person attendance limitations. This will be a virtual public hearing and participants who have registered in advance will be able to make their presentations to the committee using WebEx, an online event that is being moderated by city staff. Anyone wishing to view the hearing may do so by watching it on YouTube. Participants who have registered in advance will be connecting either by their computer, a phone or tablet app, or by telephone. All participants are automatically muted on entry. When your item is called, each participant will be unmuted by the moderator, one person at a time. Only the committee members will be participating by video. Any registered participants will be participating by audio only. We ask that you also mute your devices until you are called on to speak. For all those who are waiting online, please ensure that you have called in with the phone number that you originally registered with. If you call in with a different number, you will not be able to speak on that item. To ensure audio clarity, I suggest that you do not, do not use the speakerphone function on your telephones. We acknowledge that the land we are meeting on is the, tr the traditional territory of many nations, including the Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wendat peoples, and is now home to many diverse First Nations, Inuit, and Métis peoples. We also acknowledge that Toronto was covered by Treaty 13 with the Mississaugas of the Credit. In accordance with Sections 45 and 53 of the Planning Act, 1990 is amended. This meeting of the Committee of Adjustment of the City of Toronto is called to order. My name is Alan Smithies, and I will chair today's meeting. Joining us on the panel today are Neil Palmer, Stan... Kumarik, Laura Alderson, and Don Taylor. City staff are also present, Philip Carvalino, Adam Barcella, and Emma, Rice, Emma Price. The Committee of Adjustment considers applications for variances from the provisions of the zoning bylaw that apply to property, permission to extend or alter lawful nonconforming uses, and consent to sever property to create new lots. Anyone attending today who wants to receive a copy of the committee's decision must submit a written request for a decision by email. Please ensure that you include your name, address, and email address because Committee of Adjustment and the T-Lab will be sending notifications and appeal updates by email. If you do not agree with the committee's decision, it may be appealed to the Toronto Local Appeal Body, T-Lab, or in some limited circumstances to the Local Planning Appeal Tribunal, LPAT. Appeal instructions are set out at the bottom of the committee's decision. The hearing procedure is as follows. I will call each item in the order listed on the agenda. Where an application is uncontested, the agent or applicant will proceed with their presentation if required. If the committee does not require a presentation, applicants are to advise the chair should they wish to speak on that item. The committee may ask questions and or take the matter into the committee for a decision. Each speaker, including the applicant or agent, is given a maximum of five minutes to address the committee. I will comment when you are reaching the five-minute limit. When addressing the committee, please state clearly your name and address, and please remember to confine your remarks to the matters described in the application. The applicant or agent proceeds first and will make their presentation to the committee. Please note that the committee may not entertain revisions to proposals at the hearing today. To ensure that a revised application is accurate and that all those entitled to notice of the application are informed of the changes, the committee may decide to defer the application if it has been substantially revised. Then individuals, either in support or opposed to the application, are invited to speak. Committee members may ask questions of each speaker after they have finished their presentation. When all speakers are finished, the applicant or agent has an opportunity to rebut only those issues that were raised by the previous speakers. This marks the end of discussion on the item. The application is then taken into committee for a decision. Are there any panel members here this afternoon who have a conflict of interest that they would like to declare? Okay, thank you. We will proceed to the uh, first item on our this afternoon's agenda. It is item number 21, 11 Cosmo Road. 
I have one person. Hello, Mr. Chair. I have one person registered to speak. That is uh, Saruj Kalushchin. Yes. Are you there? Saruj Kalushchin? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Yes, thank you. Can I get your uh, full name and address, please? It's Saruj Kalushchin, 1800 A Avenue Road. Okay. Uh, just a and moment, sir. I have to. Uh, Mr. Kumarik has stepped out. I'll have to wait till he comes back. Are you, sure. Okay, we'll, we'll proceed. Uh, Mr. Kalushin, it's, there is a, wanted to, to ask, there was a planning report submitted by uh, city planning dated the 1st of February, which uh, indicates that they appear to have no objections to your application, provided that the proposed above grade building length shall not exceed 17.43 meters as shown on the plan submitted and held on file by the committee's office dated November 17, 2020. Any other variances that may appear on these plans but are not listed in the written decision are not authorized. Have you had the opportunity to read that report, sir? Yes, I have. Okay, I uh, just wanted to ask, like I said, it's very clear what you're asking for in the four variances. I'll just ask the committee if, uh, I'll just ask, is there anything that you'd like to uh, tell the committee that isn't contained in the material that the uh, committee has before it this afternoon? Uh, no, uh, there are some clarifications if, if needed, uh, if somebody needs explanation, I'll be more than happy to do so. Okay, well, if, if, the, if you think there are clarifications, it might be the time to make those clarifications now. If there's something that we don't have before us in, in the material we have on our computers. Well, I just I just wanted to point out for uh, variance number one and four in regards to the coverage and the uh, the uh, building length um, those were uh, the zoning examiner asked us to include that in this application but those were actually approved by committee in uh, 2019 in our original application for the basement extension so um, this this new application uh, which is for the ground floor to be extended um, the zoning examiner because the basement plans are also showing asked us to include that as well so i just wanted to clarify that uh, for the committee. Well, that's good information to know. Thank you very much, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Chair, I'm satisfied that the variances requested meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move for approval. Okay, so I have someone to second that motion? Okay, Mr. Palmer seconds. Uh, all those in favor? Ms. Alderson, are you in favor? Oh, we're losing Ms. Alderson. Ms. Alderson, are you in favor? I just want to make sure that uh, they are in a, a, agree to condition the condition that the planning department has laid out for them. That's all before we, we uh, go for approval. Uh, yeah, I asked. I asked them at the beginning. I didn't have any objection to that. Uh, I can ask them. I can ask them again. Uh, Mr. Kalushian, are you there? Yes, can I'm here. Make, do you have? Any can we make it subject? To, do you have any objection to city planning's recommendation? No, I had been in touch with uh, city planning in advance, so I know that they don't want the ground floor to be extended as per they described uh, in the thing. We have no intentions of making any changes to the drawings as proposed. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Alderson, we have a uh, we have a motion to approve that's been put forward by uh, by by Mr. Taylor and seconded by Mr. Palmer. So, are you in favor of that motion? Yes, I am. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. That motion. Chair. May, may I just ascertain that the approval is subject to the community planning department condition? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Uh, sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning's condition. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Komorik, I just did not get to ask. I didn't hear your response. Did, did you have any conflicts of interest to declare? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Well, that's, I understood that as well. 
<laughs> Item number 22. Uh, we're at 42 Glen Aden Avenue East. I have one person registered to speak. That's Ian Cunha. Mr. Cunha, are you there? Yes, sir, I am. Yes, hi, Mr. Cunha. I have, uh, just to uh, let you know, I have the file I have before me. There are no staff comments or conditions. Is there anything that you'd like to advise the committee that isn't contained in the material the committee has before it this afternoon? Uh, only, uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, uh, only that we've spoken to the neighbors on both sides and uh, they were okay with the, uh, with the project. Okay, thank you. It's pretty clear what you're asking for in the variances before us. I'll just ask the committee, does it have any questions? There being none, could I get a motion, please? I'll uh, move for approval. Uh, variances requested are minor in nature and meet four tests of the uh, Planning Act. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Someone to second that motion? I'd be happy to second that motion. Ms. Alderson seconds. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Mr. Cunha, your application has been unanimously approved without conditions. Sir. Thank you so much. Have a good afternoon. Item number 23, five Saunders Crescent. I have one person registered to speak. That is a Ragavendra Pai. I hope I've said pronounced that correctly. Are you there, sir? Ragavendra Pai. Hello, can you, you hear me? Yes, well, I can hear you. Can yes, I can you hear me? Can I get your full name and address, please? It's Ragavendra Pai. Pi Saunders Crescent, Etobicoke, M8Y2P7. Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, we have two variances before us. I think it's pretty clear. The committee's pretty clear on what you're asking for. I just wanted to ask, is there anything uh, you'd, you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material that's uh, before the committee this afternoon? I have, um, yes. Uh, I have spoken to both my neighbors at four Saunders Crescent and six Saunders Crescent, and they are okay with the extension. Okay, great. Thank you very much, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, could I get a motion on this application? I note that the only condition from staff is urban forestry. I believe the application is minor and meets the port test, and uh, therefore I would like to move approval subject to urban forestry condition two. Someone to second Mr. Kumerick's motion? I'll second that motion. Mr. Taylor seconds. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application is unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you. Thank you. Item number 24, 15 Park Chester Road. I have one person registered to speak. That is Ida Evangelista. Are you there? Hi. Good afternoon, Mr. Chair. Ida Evangelista present. Yes, hi, Ms. Evangelista. I just wanted to ask, there was a... Uh, Report from city planning dated the 29th of January, 2021, appears to indicate that they have no objection provided that the proposed development is constructed as illustrated on the site plan submitted on November 18th, 2020 and held on file by the committee as it relates to the proposed lot coverage, which includes the existing shed and excavated porch. Have you had the opportunity to read that uh, report in that condition? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes, I have, and I am in agreement with the condition. Okay, thank you, madam. I just wanted to ask, I think it's pretty, the committee's pretty clear on what you're asking for, but is there anything that you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the uh, material that we have before us this afternoon? Uh, Mr. Chair, um, I believe I've submitted um, all submission materials to outline uh, why we have the coverage that we are asking for and along with the petition of support. And um, also in the submission, it does illustrate that there, uh, the photographs uh, do illustrate that what we are asking for is characteristic to the neighborhood. Oh, thank you very much. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion please? Mr. Chair, I'm satisfied that the uh, requested variances meet the four tests under the Planning Act, and I move approval subject to the condition of the uh, Planning Department. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Someone to second that motion? 
Mr. Kumerick seconds. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Madam, your application has been unanimously approved subject to city planning conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 25, uh, 207 Grandview Boulevard South. I have two people registered to speak. Uh, the agent is uh, Jed Jones. Are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, Mr. Jones, uh, the only staff condition we have on here is from urban forestry. I'm just, uh, because we have another uh, interested person with respect to this application, if you could give us a brief presentation Sorry. on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Sorry, Mr. Chair. Um, the other Participant Adam Elrich is actually the owner of the property. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I added him to the file in case there were some questions that I couldn't answer. Okay. Uh, is there anything that you'd like to tell the committee that isn't contained in the material we have before us? No, I think it's pretty straightforward, hopefully. Okay, thank you. I'll just ask the committee, does it have any questions or comments? Thank you. Could I get a motion on this application, please? Mr. Chair, I find the application to be minor and um, meeting the four test. I would therefore like to propose approval uh, subject to urban, sorry, urban forestry condition one. Thank you, sir. Someone to second Mr. Kumrick's motion. Mr. Palmer seconds. All those in favor? The motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee. Thank you. Item number 26, 10 Pine Hill Crescent. I have three, four people registered to speak. Uh, the agent is a Victor Gutberg. I hope I've pronounced yes. it correctly. Are you there, sir? Yeah. Yes, I'm here. Sir, can I get your, uh, your uh, full name and address, please? Uh, my name is Victor Gidberg. I'm an architect. Uh, I'm, I live at 33 Belvedere Crescent and Richmond Hill, and okay. I'm representing the owner, the owner yes, of the sir. property. We have, uh, there's two, there's a recommended condition from urban forestry. There's also a report from city planning dated the 29th of January, 2021. They appear to have no objection, but they're, that's provided the FS, the floor space index is reduced to 0 0.98. Now, are you proposing to reduce the floor space index to zero? Yes, yes that's correct. We, did, we discussed this issue with uh, planning department and uh, we reduced our FSI to 0 0.98. I submitted revised uh, site plan, which is on the screen right now. And uh, in order to reduce FSI, we also reduced uh, East Yacht setback from uh, okay. Okay. Uh, reading, about 0 0.6 to 0, 0 0.9. And yesterday I sent a revised set of drawings to the okay. so committee of adjustment. If we can just go, if you can go through the notice and just, we'll just make sure we've got these changes correctly. So you're saying variance number one, which currently reads, the new dwelling will have a floor space index of 1.03 times the lot area has been reduced to 0 0.98. Yeah, that's correct. 0 0.98 or 261.66 uh, square meters. Okay, 261.66 square meters. And what was the other variance that you're proposing to change? Uh, variance number two will be changed from zero point. Uh, uh, it will read the new dwelling will be located zero point six eight meters from the west side lot line, and zero point nine meters from the east side lot line. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that. And one, same that goes one. same goes for variance number five. So uh, zero point six should be changed to zero point nine. Okay. Let me just make sure we've got this correct. Variance number two: the new dwelling will be loaded. The way you want it to read is the new dwelling will be located 0 0.68 meters from the west side lot line and 0 0.9 meters from the east side lot line. That's variance. Yeah, two. that's correct. And variance number five, the new fr uh, front platform will be located 0 0.68 meters from the west side lot line and the new third story rear platform will be located 0 0.68 meters from the west side lot line and 0 0.9 meters from the east side lot line. Is that correct? Yes, that's okay. correct. Yeah. Okay, thank you, sir. If you could, uh, 
give the committee a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your revised application. And mm -hmm. that, that would be most appreciated. Yes, absolutely. So basically, we pro were proposing three-story uh, three uh, residential building with the with integral garage. And uh, the maximum FSI permitted in this area is 0 0.8. So we increasing uh, to 0 0.98, which I think it's uh, reasonable and minor in nature. Uh, the other variances, uh, uh, as we already discussed, it's uh, side yard setbacks, re reduction of side yard setbacks, because it's a narrow lot, and basically with 1.2 meters uh, uh, as per by lot, it would be difficult to design decent uh, structure on 25-foot lot. Uh, so, yeah, that's why we're reducing uh, side yard setbacks. And apparently, if you look at the footprint of the existing house, we actually uh, improving the condition because existing setbacks are even even smaller <clears throat> on the east side existing setback is only 0 0.45 uh, next variance number three is basically it's uh, rather technical in nature because uh, the physical dimension of the house is 17 meters but because the, the way the building last lens is measured uh, by offsetting the uh, uh, front yard uh, minimum front yard setback line uh, by 17 meters, so the corner of, its, of the house encroaching into the offset line, but the actual physical dimension of the house, it's just because the property is not uh, rectangular, because the side lot lines go, go to the angle. <clears throat> and finally, number uh, variance number four is uh, for main wall heights. So, uh, as you can see, the architecture, the style of the house is modern, so we're going with flat roof and, um, yeah, so uh, that what triggers this variance. We, we we have no variance for for the overall roof height. So uh, we are we are in compliance with uh, overall roof, roof height, but uh, uh, main wall because of the design of the house, because of the modern architecture, it's it's a variance. But it's it's basically it's in the character of this uh, neighborhood. Uh, like if you look at the streetscape, uh, the house number fourteen is very similar. Uh, no, design is not similar, but it's, uh, it's a flat roof, uh, flat roof uh, house, three-story house. And at the end of the street, there are some uh, four-story condominiums, which are uh, contemporary design. So it's basically it's not a contradiction with the uh, character of this neighborhood and this streetscape. Yeah, so uh, as you can see on this diagram, the uh, building height is 9.5 meters, which is under... under uh, Okay, thank you, sir. Uh, if I can, uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? I do. I actually have a question about you brought up number fourteen, and I um, I did look at it on uh, Google Maps. Do you have any idea what the FSI is for for number fourteen? No, I don't. I just I refer to number fourteen uh, as a as an example of. Uh, uh, just the uh, type of the house with three story and flat roof, but uh, I have no idea what the facade they have. Okay. Uh, when, we discuss, when we discuss FSI with uh, planning department, they uh, noticed that uh, the maximum what was what, what was approved in this area is 0 0.98, so that's what we matched. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we will go to our next person on the uh, list. I have a Arist Atapak. The G, are you there? Arist Atufak, the G. I'm sure I'm not pronouncing that correctly. I I did have them. Um, I don't have them anymore. Maybe we can go to the next person, and then yeah, I'll have I'll, I'll reach out I'll to cross them. Cross them off the list. I have a uh, Pew Tong Zhang. Are you there? Pew Tong Zhang or Ping Zhu? Yes, we are here. Okay, thank you. Can I get your full name and address, please? Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Hui Tong Zhang, and my wife's name is Ping Xu, right? Yeah. Oh, my. So if you could give us your views on this application, sir. We are neighbor of this uh, property. Uh, um, our address is 
8 Pine Hill Crescent. Okay, please proceed. Yeah, so we have the objection. Uh, we object this uh, proposal like uh, uh, east side yard setback. Uh, I noticed the neighbor uh, architect uh, uh, sent a new proposal to change to uh, 0 0.9 meters. And uh, we uh, still think regarding the uh, size and the height of the of the uh, proposed construction, uh, it still make us uh, uh, feel uh, uh, depressed. And we hope uh, they can uh, revise to uh, one point zero five meter on the on the east side setback. Yeah, that's that's all. Okay, thank you, sir. I'll just ask the committee. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I have the last person on the list, uh, Charnel Magumbe. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. I, oh, I'm just here listening. Uh, I'm also a neighbor of uh, Tony. So I just, uh, yeah, I, I guess my concerns are just about the construction that's happening on the street. Um, sort of what's that going to look like? It's a very no narrow street as it is. And um, I can only imagine uh, the impact that it's going to have here on our, on our very quiet, tiny street. And just uh, if I can get an idea of when this project starts. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, thank you. I'll go back to the uh, the agent. Sir, are you there? Mr. Gutberg, are you there? Hello? Yes, hello, sir. Are you there? Yes. And did you, did you hear the comments from the previous speakers? Uh, I heard the comments. I received email this morning from the owner of the house, and he agreed on uh, redu further reduction of the uh, side yard setback to one point. Uh, zero 0.5, I mean, increase, not reduction, so reduction of variance to 1.05. Okay. Are you proposing another change to your application? Well, uh, it was my understanding that two neighbors came to the agreement that uh, uh, this 1.05 setback will make uh, a neighbor from number uh, eight happy. So, owner of uh, my, my client uh, agrees on this uh, change. Okay, so you have to, are you, so are you proposing another change in addition to the revisions you've already made previously? Um, yes. So can you tell the committee what change that you're proposing to make? A variance number two uh, will read, the new dwelling will be located 0 0.68 meters from the west side lot line and 1.05 meters from the east side lot line. So you're increasing it for you originally were proposing 0 0.9 meters. So what is it now? Uh, 1.05. 1.05. Okay. So just let's be clear. Variance number two, you revised again. So the new dwelling will be located 0 0.68 meters from the west side lot line and 1.05 meters from the east side lot line. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Okay, thank you. Is there anything else you'd like to add in response to the comments from the previous speakers? Uh, yeah, there was a question when construction will be started. It's hard to say that basically we have to, we have to, subject to your approval, we have to apply for a uh, building permit and we already have, uh, uh, we applied for conservation approval already and uh, we received it. So, yeah, so basically it's a building permit and uh, I'm hoping that construction can be commenced uh, probably middle of this year sometime. Okay, thank you very much. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Mr. Taylor. Sir, you just mentioned that you were prepared to change the um, side yard setback from the east side lot line to 1.05. Do you wish to propose a change to variance number five? You already told us that you were prepared to change the um, 
new front platform set back to 0 0.9 meters from the east side lot line. Are you proposing that that remains 0 0.9? No, no, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, definitely we have to change this as well because it platform aligns with, uh, with this uh, east side lot, uh, east side. Uh, so it should be one, it thing. should be 1.05 meters as well. Correct. Yeah, yeah okay. absolutely right. Yeah. Okay, so let's just be clear. Variance number five, you're proposing to change that one as well? Yes. Okay, so it will read. The new front platform will be located 0 0.68 meters from the west side lot line, and the new third story rear platform will be located 0 0.68 meters from the west side lot line and 1.05 meters from the east side lot line. Is that the way it should read? That's correct. Yes, yes, that's correct. Okay, great. Thank you. Uh, there are no further changes to this uh, revised application. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? One more. Um, Gimmerich? Given that you're changing the, the side yard setback, is that also going to affect your FSI? And are you, or do you want to leave that at 98? Uh, no, it will not affect our FSI. I explained why. This change is only six inches, uh, so it's approximately uh, uh, that's okay. If it does, doesn't, um, it doesn't. Yeah. No, the, the, I, I explained why we are not changing FSI. We have uh, some open to above areas. So we probably will reduce open to above area uh, inside the house and gain additional square footage by doing this. No problem. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I, any further questions of the speaker? Can I get a motion on this revised application, please? Mr. Chair. Um, I would like to propose approval um, based on the amendments and subject to forestry condition number one, uh, given that uh, I feel that the application is minor in nature and needs support test. Thank you very much. Someone to second Mr. Schumer's motion. Mr. Palmer seconds. All those in favor? And motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been your revised application has been unanimously approved. Suburban forestry conditions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number twenty-seven, two forty-eight and two fifty-four Rexdale Boulevard. I Hello. Have, yes. Uh, one person registered to speak. Tarvo Estrat. Are you there? Yep. Yes, I'm here. I am the architect on behalf and of the owner you, sir, and. Uh, Sir, can I get your full name and address, please? Sure, Tarvo Eistrat, uh, 450 Runnymede Road in Toronto. Okay, thank you, sir. It's, you have two variances before us. So it's pretty clear what you're asking for. I note that uh, there's a letter from Councillor Ford dated the 9th of February who's in support of your mm -hmm. variances. I'm just going to ask, is there anything uh, that you'd like to advise the committee of that isn't in the material we have before us this afternoon? No, I believe it's all there. Uh, if there's any questions, I, I'm sure, uh, happy to answer them, but I think everything is in the documentation provided. Great. So I'll leave Thank it at you, that. Sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? I'm prepared to make a motion to approve. Uh, I believe it meets the four tests. It's minor in nature and it's certainly desirable. Uh, and I would move to support. Thank you, Ms. Alderson. Can I get someone to second Ms. Alderson's motion? I'll second the motion with uh, just a comment that as a Rexdale, Rexdale Hyundai customer, I'm so glad that you're improving the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, you, we all are. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Someone, all those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 28, 16 Heman Street. I have one person registered to speak on this item is the agent Toivo Vahi. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am. I am present. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I get your full name and address, please? My name is Toivo Vahi, 17 Bridal Trail, Midhurst, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. I just note uh, from staff we had uh, recommended condition from Urban Forestry 
there was a request for a deferral from Transportation Services, but I understand that their conditions have been satisfied in an email that was sent sub subsequently. Am I correct, uh, Mr. Secretary Treasurer? Uh, yes, there is, uh, Mr. Chair, through you. There is a um, correspondence sent yesterday um, regarding that request for deferral, and it's in your um, additional materials email. Okay, thank you. I'll just ask, sir, is there anything uh, that you'd like to advise the committee of that isn't in the material that we have before us this afternoon? Um, just to clarify what the deferral was uh, re in regards to, uh, it had to do with the front yard uh, parking. Um, this is an existing parking pad that's been in place uh, since at least uh, 2007, according to Google Maps. Um, so they were just trying to verify that uh, the existing parking uh, was on the private property that the 3.2 by 5.6 meter space is allotted on the on the uh, private property, and it is. So they were they were uh, happy uh, to know that uh, um, that uh, was in place, and uh, they had no objection. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on this application, please? I'll uh, move for approval. Uh, application uh, is minor and meets the four tests in the Planning Act. And that's subject to forestry condition number one. Thank you, Mr. Palmer. Someone to second Mr. Palmer's motion. Mr. Kumrick seconds. All those in favor? And motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application's been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair and committee. Thank you. Item number 2960 Ellsfield Road. I have one person registered to speak. That is David Lang. Are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, Mr. Lang, I just wanted to uh, ask if you had the opportunity to read the city planning report of uh, February the 1st, 2021. They would like the coverage uh, reduced to below 40%. Have you had the opportunity to uh, review that report? Uh, I spoke to them about a month ago. Uh, I sent them a summary of considerations to support the application. I did not hear back from them, but to answer your question, I did just read their recent report. Uh, they were making the same recommendation for a very minor decrease in the coverage. Um, but we would like to proceed with the plan as proposed. We felt it was unreasonable. Okay, thank you. If you could uh, give the committee a brief presentation on why you uh, what you see as the merits of your proposal, uh, especially in regard, especially in regards to the city planning report. Okay. Um, uh, as you can see in the plans, the existing home and lot size are very restricting, which means we need relief for both coverage and floor space index. The additional space is intended to improve the overall functional layout, particularly for the kitchen. The application also requires relief for side yard setbacks on the right side due to the position of the house on the lot. The proposed addition has been designed to be in line with the existing sidewalls. Um, as, as I just said, I spoke with the planner several weeks ago to address their concerns. Um, and I sent them a summary of a number of items. Firstly, we found that the overall variances we were asking for are consistent with other development patterns that are on the street. Uh, of particular note, there's a project directly across the street at 621 Ellsfield, which was recently constructed as a totally new home with variances in excess of what we are proposing. At the same time, uh, it should be noted that the actual proposed building area, calculated percentages of the lot coverage and floor space index will all be significantly lower than other developments on Ellsfield. Meaning that after the addition, the house is still smaller than many other homes on the street. Um, and then at the last, I'd like to confirm a number of letters of support were submitted by neighbors, particularly on both sides of the house. Uh, I just want to make sure you got all that. We're not aware of any other objection. Um, the thing with the planning report, um, I just wanted to stress, we weren't ignoring the report. I thought I had addressed their concerns a month ago and they went sort of quiet. I had not heard from them. So to see that report at the last minute was a little surprising. 
um, even though I had already tried to address it with them. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, uh, could I get a motion on this application, please? Please note that uh, the only condition, recommended condition, is the one from city planning, which wanted the coverage reduced to below 40%. Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'm going to disregard the comment of the planning department. I think if you uh, do the math on what they're saying, first of all, they don't say how much they want the coverage reduced to, just less than 40 percent. So I could I could argue that 39.99 percent would satisfy them, and that's one uh, square meter difference. So um, I'm just going to move approval. I find the variances to be uh, meeting all of the requirements under the Planning Act, and my motion would be uh, approval without conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Someone to second Mr. Taylor's motion. I'd like to second that. All right. Thank you very, thank you very much, Ms. Alderson. Someone to second. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved without condition. Thank you very much. Thank you. Item number 30, 48 Dort Avenue. I have two people registered to speak. I have uh, Nafisa Zangiabadi. I know I haven't pronounced that correctly. Are you there? Yes, Nafisa Zangiabadi. Yes, thank you, madam. Can I get your full name and address? Uh, my name is Nafisa Zangiabadi, and my address is 30 Apple Orchard Path, Thornhill, Ontario, L3T3B6. Okay, thank you, madam. I just wanted to ask, there, I have a report from city planning dated the 1st of February 2021, and uh, it's indicating that uh, you would be requesting a deferral. Is that correct? Yes, correct. Um, we are actually... Uh, uh, communicating with the zoning department and the zoning manager of the area uh, to revise the drawings in a way that uh, we reduce the GFA uh, because of the uh, prevailing topical bylaw, which includes the basement in the GFA and it's uh, a result in the high GFA. So uh, we're just going back and forth with them and we already actually sent the revised drawings to them and waiting for the revised notice to be sent back to us. So that's why we're requesting a deferral till we get that. Okay, so you would be requesting the deferral to meet with city planning and to correct your variances? Yes, correct. Okay, thank you. Uh, I know we have one person registered to speak here. I just want to find out his views on a deferral. I have a Michael Haslin. Are you there? Yes, I am. Mr. Haslin, can I get your full name and address? Mike Haslin, 65 Jellicoe Avenue. Okay, sir, I uh, don't know if you've heard, but the agent is requesting a, a deferral in order to meet with uh, city planning and to correct some variances on their application. Do you have an objections to the variance? To, I mean, to the deferral? Uh, no, I'm just, uh, as long as they're, you know, going to uh, be concerned with the eight that they have, I'm assuming that they're going, that's what they're going to address is the eight variances. Well, they'll probably because... have to adjust in consultation with the uh, city planning, in which case the application will be resubmitted and then recirculated. Right, so I'll have an opportunity to speak on the new plan, yeah, you will. correct? You will at the, yeah. Okay, yeah, so I don't have any problem with them deferring at all as long as uh, many of these are addressed. Okay, thank you. Uh, can I get okay. a motion on this deferral request, please? Mr. Chair, I'll move for deferral to enable the applicant to uh, alter the variance requested in connection with, uh, in consultation with the city of uh, the planning department. Thank you very much, Mr. Taylor. Someone to second that motion? I can second that motion. Ms. Alderson seconds. All those in favor? The motion carries. Madam, your application has been deferred to the next available meeting so that you can meet with uh, city planning and, and revise your application. Thank you. Thank you. Item number Thank 31, you. A, B, C, and D. That's 19 and 21 29th Street. I have one, two, three, four, five people registered to speak. And is uh, I have the agent, Simon West. Are you there, sir? 
Tyler Wood is here, but Michael Flynn is representing the application. Ms. Loser, can I get your full name and address, please? Michael Flynn, 90 Cordova Avenue. Okay, thank you, sir. I just wanted to... I just wanted to ask if you've had the opportunity to read these reports. There's a uh, recommended condition from urban forestry. There is uh, city planning, which uh, has comments, which indicates they have no appear to have no objection to your application since it's been revised to their satisfaction. Development engineering uh, report dated the 19th of November, 2020 had their recommended conditions. And Heritage Toronto had a report of the 2nd of February, 2021, which had their recommended conditions. And I just wanted to ask if you had an opportunity to read those reports. Yes, sir, I have. Okay, thank you. We have a num number of people here who'd like to speak on your application. So if you could give the committee a uh, presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. Yes, sir. Uh, first of all, I'd like to point out that this application has been in the works for approximately two years. We've worked with planning department very closely. We've revised the drawings four times. We've uh, given particular attention to the guidelines of the Long Branch. <clears throat> planning has no objection. Forestry has no objection, they have, but they have two conditions. Transportation department has no objection. We're dealing here with a four tests plus a log branch guideline. And we have objections that deal with uh, effectively trees, lot frontage, and lot area. Although there are other items, those are the primary concerns of the neighbors and the uh, log branch association. We believe that we have, in this case, provided uh, a good application with minimal minor variances relative to a consent situation. We're taking two houses down, we're putting three modern homes up that are in keeping with the neighborhood. The uh, severance creates lots that are in keeping with the neighborhood. And contrary to uh, one of these objection letters, I would suggest to you that their evidence uh, supports our application in that they show that there are 12 properties within there, or 16, that are below the 16 or 12 meter mark, and I, are identical to the abutting properties. So this is, a home or homes that are being proposed to be created that are well within keeping of the neighborhood. They are generally in keeping with the guidelines. They are generally in keeping with the official plan, generally in keeping with the zoning bylaws. And I think they're appropriate development of the lands and they create no adverse impact on a G property. So I'd be happy to go through specifics, but I think that we maybe should hear from the uh, other speakers first, and then I'd be happy to respond. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? No, we'll go to the next person on our list. I have an Andy Choles. Are you there? I am. Uh, I think Mr. Vela should be speaking first. I not entirely sure, but I think that's what we planned. Okay, if he wants to speak first, uh, is it Mr. Stephen Vella there? Hi, how are you doing? Yes, hello, sir. Can you hear Can you me all right? Name and address, please. Stephen Vella, 42 Ash Crescent, and it's just down the street from 29th Street. Okay, if you'd like to give us your views on this application. Can, uh, can you please pull up my letter? It's uh, it, I sent it in on January 19th. Mr. Barcella, can you, did you find that? Sir, you can start. It was uh, 3.2 megs. There we go. Thank you. So there's a statement that the applicant is making regarding as of right to give justification for removing the trees 
but his justification is not correct. If the applicant was not severing the property, then he would have an area that is as of right based on the current footprint of the houses that he has that's on the property. But the applicant is severing the property to create an area to build, build that, and that's what they are showing for as of right in their document. This is not correct. They would have to show the current house footprint, not the future house's footprint, and not ask for any variances. They are applying the bylaws incorrectly. Nope. The City of Toronto has a goal to achieve a tree canopy of 40%, according to the Toronto Tree Canopy Study. Over the last nine years, the City Tree Canopy has increased from 26.6% to 28.4%. Now, it's only a 1.8% increase, but it is an increase. In Long Branch, the tree canopy has declined from 26.5% to 15%. That's a 43% decrease in the tree canopy. So what are some of the reasons for this catastrophic decline? Some trees were lost from the ash borer, some from ice storms, but these challenges faced the entire city. The main component for the loss in Long Branch was the large number of development applications and building permits. Long Branch had 700 of the 3,650 in the city, and that's 19% of the total during that time frame. That is an amazing percentage to me. The population of Long Branch is 10,084 people. The population of Toronto is 3 million, is 2,930,000. So the percentage in population of Long Branch is 0.34 of the city of Toronto. That's less than half, half a percent of the city. If Long Branch had the same percentage of development applications as population, they would have 12, but there were 700. This information is to shine a spotlight on the main reason the tree canopy decreased so much. This development is planning to remove 15 of 17 affected trees. Now, the last picture on my document shows the uh, the area that's going to be going to be uh, cleared out right there. Yeah, that's a, those trees might not be very large individually, but what a beautiful canopy they create. It is not easy to save the trees but it is doable if the developers have a will to save them. By refusing this application, the committee will send a message that the trees are important and developers have to adjust their development plans. Development applications that destroy the tree canopy start with a request to the Committee of Adjustments for variances for the development. Let the developers know that Law Branch is serious about supporting Toronto's tree canopy goal of 40% and will protect the trees on this property by refusing this application. I did uh, also attach some some screenshots of where I got the information from from the Toronto Tree Canopy Study, and uh, from where they did the uh, uh, the population for the city of Toronto came from. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? Any questions? Go to our next speaker on the list. I have an Andy Choles. Are you there? Refer to uh, Sheila Carmichael. Ms. Carmichael, are you there? Ms. Carmichael. Good afternoon. Yes, yes, I, I am. Thank you. Address, please. Yep, it's Sheila Carmichael. I live at number 72, 36th Street. Okay, thank you. If you'd please give us your views on this application. Okay, I'm a resident of Long Branch. I'm also a member of the Long Branch Tree Canopy Preservation and Enhancement Committee. Um, there has been reference already to the impact on these trees, so I'm just going to cut my, my thing back to this proposal would represent the permanent loss of plantable space for trees to replace and grow the tree canopy with this application. This application blatantly and irresponsibly ignores 16 impacted trees as if they're not even there. Based on the negative impact and implications on the environment and climate alone and the relevant official plan and provincial policies, this application for consent should be refused. The applicant has submitted an arborist report and tree preservation plan, which is clearly anything but, that proposes to eliminate 15 out of 17 trees on these two properties and proposes building right up to the base of one of the supposed protected two boundary trees to the extent it will be lost as well. And just a reminder that this is the same street where we address the threat to a tree at number 50 
earlier this morning. This is a street with almost no tree canopy and these subject two lots provide the majority of mature trees in this stretch of 29th Street. These trees are valuable members of Long Branch Tree Canopy, which is a key defining characteristic of the Long Branch neighborhood and will contribute their environmental benefits for many years to come. This application is asking for variances that are not minor. They will result in the loss of these trees. The trees cannot speak for themselves. They need us to be tree stewards and speak for them. We therefore request that this application for consent and variances be refused by the members of the Committee of Adjustment. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to uh, Mr. Choles. Are you there? Uh, Sandy Donald. Also. Yes, okay, I'll, I'll go to her. Uh, Ms. Donald, are you there? Hi, Sandy. Sandy, if you can hear me, can you turn off your second device, please? We're having a lot of uh, difficulty hearing with the feedback, yeah. Madam, just speak into your telephone. Turn everything else off. I think we've lost Sandy now. Ms. Donald, are you there? Now we'll go back to Mr. Choles. Mr. Choles, are you there? I am. I am. Could I uh, have uh, you call up a letter of objection from Christine Mercado, uh, supporting document stated uh, February the 1st, 2021? And I'm looking at uh, page five. Okay, what this uh, page five shows us is the prevailing lot frontage on the block. Oh, sorry, by the name. My, my name is Andy Choles. I live at uh, 12 Jasmine Avenue and not too far from uh, 29th Street. And I'm a member of the Long Branch Neighborhood Association Board. And our mission is to protect, celebrate, and enhance the neighborhood of the village of Long Branch. <clears throat> Again, the uh, chart on page five is showing prevailing lot frontages of the block that goes from 29th Street, Daisy, down Flocks, and across on Fairfield, which is the block that uh, these properties back onto. Um, and we can see that the, the blue and the green section is uh, stuff that is uh, 9.35 meters and greater. The uh, prescribed uh, frontage for these two properties, 19 and 21, is 7.62, and they are certainly in the minority. So the prevailing frontage is certainly not addressed with these two um, uh, plans here, and that's contrary to uh, the official plan. 4.1.5b, prevailing size and configuration of lots. Could I please uh, switch to page seven of the same letter? This one shows prevailing FSI of the block and you can see a large majority of the uh, lots, even the ones with the smaller uh, lot frontages are within the um, FSI of, for the, of 0.35. Uh, one, exceeds it, number 15 Fairfield is a 0.42 FSI, and that's a minor uh, variance that was granted back while it's the uh, house in orange. There are a number of four plexes or six plexes on the bottom there that uh, also exceed the uh, FSI. So the application is seeking to build three houses on lots with 7.6 meter frontage and FSI 0.68, which again is not characteristic of the the uh, houses in the block. This is not an infill as uh, defined by the official plan. These were always residential um, properties. They were not uh, formerly uh, commercial or utility things. They were always uh, residential properties and they were well-treated residential properties. And they've, they're seeking to take three properties, sorry, th two properties, divide them into three with undersized lots and build some houses on them. This is not an infill as designed by OP, um, the official plan 4.4. There's no gap here to be filled in. It's uh, again, two lots that are they're trying to divide into three and then build houses upon them. Um, the official plan also does not support the assembly of lots for the purpose of intensification. He's taking two lots put together and then dividing them up again. Uh, it does not adhere to the prevailing lot pattern in the neighborhood and on that block. 
The official plan is a great document and we would urge you to stick to the zoning laws laid out in it. The Long Branch Neighborhood Guidelines lay out recommended inclusions so that a build will adhere to zoning bylaws and maintain the neighborhood character. The houses will not enhance or maintain the neighborhood character. We ask this application be refused. It seems they're trying to create lots that do not comply with the bylaws or guidelines and cutting down a lot of trees in the process. If this was just two lots, there might be something a little more compliant that we could, we could deal with. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to our last speaker. Uh, actually, I'll try Ms. Sandy Donald. Are you there? Kate, can you hear me? Yes, yes uh, Sandy Donald. Can I get your full name and address, please? My full name is Alexander Brackett Sandy Donald. I'm from 3436th Street in Long Branch. Okay, if you could uh, give us your views on this uh, topic, but please don't repeat stuff that's already been re that's already been uh, stated by other speakers. Okay, um, I had sent information through that hopefully was included in your package, and uh, going through uh, my information and whatnot, and actually presenting in regards to the trees because we're talking of removal of 15 trees and possibly two dying uh, from uh, previous decisions that have been made by T-Lab, 15 Stanley Avenue, both provincial policy documents, the PPSS and the growth plan provide equal uh, policy guidance and support on an environment first and green infrastructure approach to land use building decisions. Why is this application? 7036 36th Street, T-Lab. Uh, the official plan states that urban forest should not be compromised by de development pressure. Protecting trees, natural environment, and urban forest should not be compromised by growth sensitivity to the needs of the environment or neglected. Uh, trees that are protected by the uh, protect uh, by the tree protection zoning during the construction of homes often succumb to these injuries and are ultimately removed. I find that the tree bylaw uh, 813 is supportive of strong communities, but cash in lieu is not uh, by itself completely sufficient case. Uh, 7735th Street, um, uh, where is it? Uh, this state, this qualifier wherever possible is not an escape route to avoid preservation of trees in the course of development uh, properties. Rather, preserving existing mature trees uh, must be considered wherever possible. Um, in regards to the character guidelines, uh, in page uh, 76, uh, does not comply with loss of trees, 15 trees, lack of protection for two, loss of growing space. Uh, in regards to the assembly of lots, which is policy 1.9.9 .9 and 4.1, are not to be interpreted. At, this is directly out of the official plan, OPA 320, uh, are not to be interpreted as to encourage, facilitate, or justify the assembly lots within a geographic neighborhood that adhere to the prevailing lot patterns in that neighborhood for, for the purposes, uh, purposes of intensification. By assembling uh, lots, in effect, we are talking of intensification, we're talking of higher FSI, it's not permissible under 30, uh, OPA 320.4.1. Um, really, we're almost talking of an application for the deforestation of Northeast Long Branch. The 15 trees and possible destruction of two, I believe is the largest um, removal of trees that I've ever encountered in Long Branch. Um, previous T-Lab decisions have, have given precedent of why applications cannot be approved that um, basically override or have substantial removal of trees. That's my presentation. Okay, thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? I have one speaker left. I have an Andy Choles. Are you there, sir? Mr. Choles, are you there? I, I already presented already. You did? Yes, I did. 
Okay, thank you. Hi, thank you. Uh, go back to the agent. Mr. West, are you there? Uh, Mike Flynn. Yes, Mr. West, uh, you've heard the comments from the previous speakers. Uh, a lot of issues about trees. You may want to address those. Uh, first, I'd like to state that, it, in my view, the uh, Urban Forestry Department's policies re relative to the tree protection bylaws are more limited than possibly they could be. Our Arborist Report refers to trees to be destroyed, both protected and unprotected trees, and it deals with tree replacement plans. The issue that I'm having with this is that the uh, forestry department requirements for replacement trees are not flexible enough to create a significant addition to the urban forest. So we are, of course, meeting the requirements of the, the forestry department as it relates to the three to one ratio of replacement. But we are also suggesting that trees that are not necessarily of uh, large caliber currently or not mature and or not necessarily a species uh, that the urban forestry department would approve could also be planted and would create a better situation so we would of course follow urban uh, forestry's requirements regarding species and caliper but we would also suggest an addition and we we plan on adding uh, additional trees that will improve the situation. So yes, we are removing a number of undersized, not protected trees, and we are removing trees that are protected, but are we are replacing at three to one ratio on that basis. But we are as concerned about trees as anyone else. And certainly we would like to see the urban canopy increase over time. And of course the city's goals are not related to tomorrow, but over long-term. And we would be pleased to assist with that kind of uh, goal. So we're prepared to do that. If we go back to the issue of lot frontage and lot area, I think the uh, chart that's been presented to you shows a large number of uh, lots that are undersized, both frontage and area-wise, they are existing lots. We're proposing to provide lots that are in keeping with that character. And the design of the homes with parking garages, et cetera, et cetera, creates a situation where uh, you are creating new housing in support of the City of Toronto policy, certainly the mayor's policy. It also supports the provincial policy statement and the room to grow policies. And we think that this is a good uh, application from the perspective that it doesn't detract from the existing neighborhood. They, the homes being proposed are in keeping with the character under 320. The immediately abutting homes are on lots of six, uh, 7.62 uh, lot frontages and therefore would not offend the existing character from that perspective. So all in all, although I appreciate all the work that's been done by these people regarding the canopy and the areas and the lot frontages, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, a lot of their work supports our application. And what we're proposing is in keeping with and you know has no real negative impact of any kind the heights are appropriate we think and many of the homes that are say bungalows for now uh, could be redeveloped to be similar in height and density to what we're proposing we're not proposing any extremely large homes who's so proposing 0.68 which is in keeping with the neighborhood and most importantly you should note the planning department has looked at this proposal from all the same perspectives that these objectors have looked at it 
they have the same information available to them. They have uh, policy 320, for example, and they have over time working with us, uh, had us change this proposal to be more and more in keeping with the Long Branch guidelines and the official plan and the zoning bylaw, et cetera, et cetera. So their conclusion over a two year period is that this is appropriate. And Sir, that can you we summarize? Certainly. So all in all, I would suggest that we meet the four tests and we meet the Long Branch um, guidelines, which you could consider a fifth test in this case. And we ask the committee okay, to thank approve. you, sir. Thank you. Can I ask, out of all the uh, the trees that you have to remove, how, how many of them are unprotected? They're, they're, uh, that aren't covered seven. by the tree bylaw. They're below the side. Seven trees. How many? Seven trees. Okay. Seven. Okay, thank you. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? Yes, sir. Mr. Flynn, are you aware of an okay with conditions requested from the Engineering and Construction Services, Transportation, and Heritage Planning Departments? Yes, we are. You're okay with them? Yes, we are. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Uh, any further questions of the speaker? Could I get a motion on the consent and uh, minor variance application, please? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I'm satisfied that this is an, indeed, uh, in my opinion, an excellent example of urban infill. When I look at the immediate context, I see two blocks of uh, row houses immediately across, across the street with uh, frontages considerably less than 7.62 meters. Uh, to the south of the proposed of the property, I see uh, 15 and 13 and 11 29th Street, which have frontages, uh, I guess 13 and 15 would be pretty well, 7.62 meters. Number 11, a little bit bigger. Swinging along toward the east on the north side of Fairfield Avenue, I see frontages of uh, uh, number 72, 74, 76, and 78 of approximately 7.62 meters. So I think the uh, this development is quite in keeping uh, especially with the immediate context. And um, I move for approval of both of the consent subject to standard conditions of consent and the, um, the variance uh, requests, uh, in my opinion, all of which satisfy the uh, four tests under the Planning Act. Uh, so my condition of approval on the variances would be urban forestry conditions two and three conditions requested by engineering and construction services and the transportation department and conditions requested of the heritage planning department. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Can I have someone to second Mr. Taylor's motion? Mr. Kumer seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries unanimously. Sir, your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry, development engineering, and uh, tr heritage Toronto conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, members. Thank you very much. Uh, we have a, we're now on items 32 A, B, and C, seven uh, to nine Juliet Crescent. I note, Mr. Secretary Treasurer, that these, this, this, these files are to be closed. Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, we do have a request for file closure for the consent and minor variance applications, um, and there's also a request for refund. Okay, thank you. Uh, with respect to the request for refund, uh, Mr. Secretary Treasurer, has the uh, <coughs> has the commit has the committee spent public monies on this application? Uh, we did process the file, and notices were sent out. Okay, thank you. Uh, and we have no one registered to speak on the item. Yes. Oh, uh, we have. Is there? Can I get the? Oh, Mr. C Cecile Houston, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm uh, Ceci Dustin at 180 Geoffrey Street. I'm the owner of this property. Okay, thank you. And uh, you're oh, you're in favor, obviously, you're in favor of closing the file? 
Well, yes, unfortunately, uh, despite having worked on over two years on this application to satisfy all the questions that were raised through the review, we got an unexpected uh, comment here from uh, community planning staff that said that they felt that it was the application was not compliant with the rental housing policy chapter three of the official plan, and therefore that it was not appropriate for a review committee of adjustment. That comment came after we had been scheduled to the agenda after the sign had been posted and it leaves us with no other option than withdrawing the application and therefore we'd like to request refund. Okay, thank you. Uh, I will ask the Mr. Secretary Treasurer, should we vote separately on the refund and on the closing? Um, through you, Mr. Chair, yes. The the closing of the file should be dealt with differently Step separately first. from the refund request. Yes. Can I have a motion to close this file, please? I'll move uh, the file to be closed. Mr. Kumrick has moves that. Can I have someone to second that? I'll second. Taylor second. Second, second that. Sorry. That motion carries. That file is closed. Uh, with the issue of the refund, can I get a motion on the refund? Uh, please note that the city has has done uh, has spent time on has spent public monies on this application. So if I could get a, a vote on the a motion on the refund. Um, Mr. Palmer. Chair, before we um, vote or, or move a motion, um, can I ask the applicant how much money they've spent on their application fees to the city? Uh, Madam, did you hear the question from Mr. Palmer? So, yes, but I do not understand the question. You're asking how is much that, we Mr. spent. Palmer, Mr. Palmer is asking how much money you've spent on your application fees. Well, we we do not spend money on your fees. We spent our own money to get a survey done, a parking study done. No, just, um, just, Madam, um, just the money that you paid to the committee of adjustment for their uh, to process your application. Well, it's your standard fee of five thousand and a bit for uh, a variance on each side plus a consent, which is I think about eighteen hundred dollars. Do I do I need to specify what that amount is? I'll, I can do that. I'll confirm that with Mr. Uh, Carvalino. Mr. Carvalino, do you, he's just getting a number for us. Perhaps I'll redirect the uh, question to staff then. Okay, so I'm just waiting for Mr. Carvalino is getting us uh, looking it up. I'm going to I'm going to be able to give you an answer. I didn't expect that I was just providing moment, that number to you. I have numbers here Madam, if you want to see moment, them. Mr. Chair, approximately $13,400, just over. Okay, $13,000. Did you get that, Mr. Palmer? I believe our fees are fifteen thousand two hundred and twenty-nine dollars. Well, we're not. Going we to, apply. We're not going to do an exact accounting, madam. We're just trying to get a you know, rough approximation here. So we're looking in the range. Of right. Fourteen. Right, and se severance is five thousand eight hundred dollars, and variance for each side is about six uh, four four thousand and seven hundred dollars. So the total is over fifteen thousand dollars of fees only, not even including zoning, zoning reviews.
Mr. Chair, that's fifteen thousand two twenty nine. Fifteen. Yes. Two hundred and twenty nine dollars. Yes. Okay, thank you, Mr. Palmer. That's the fifteen thousand two hundred and twenty nine dollars. So if I could get a motion on the refund, please. Uh, I would move. It seems like the applicant just found out about this in the last week and they've been this application was filed a number of years ago and I'm not sure it's not divulged why that only came up recently. Um, but staff have spent a considerable amount of time on this as, as well as the applicant has. But I think had they known this uh, at the start of the process that they would have saved everyone a considerable amount of time. So I think a nominal amount should be refunded to them and I'm thinking about a quarter of it. So $3,800 and seven, 3807.25. That's what I'm moving for a refund of the 3807.25. So uh, you, your, your, your motion, Mr. Palmer, is to refund 3800 That's about a quarter, I think, of the total. 25% of, of the amount. Yeah, that, that would be my motion. So we have a motion from Mr. Palmer that we refund an amount, 25% of the amount that the applicant has paid to the committee. Have someone to second that motion? I'll second it. Mr. Taylor seconds. All those in favor? I have a question. Do we have a policy on this about, you know, full refunds versus partial refunds? I'm just curious. Mr. Secretary Treasurer. Through you, Mr. Chair, uh, we do have a policy that was um, put in place November 1st, 2019, um, that if this was applicable, this applic these applications were actually made before that policy, but the policy that stands today, uh, if work is done um, and notices go out, that the um, there is no entitlement to a refund. So uh, we, I have a motion for Mr. Palmer to refund 25% of that amount. This has been seconded by Mr. Taylor. Uh, all those in favor of that motion? That motion carries. Uh, so, uh, Madam, uh, you're, you will be refunded 25% of the amount that you paid. Thank you very much. We're now on uh, to item numbers 33A, B, and C which is 1438th Street. I have, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, 10 people registered to speak. I have the agent, Mr. Victor Rosa. Are you there, Mr. Rosa? I am, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Yes, thank you, Mr. Rosa. I just wanted to ask before you start, uh, you're obviously going to have to make a presentation to the committee. We have, there was a report from the 13th of March, 2020 from Development Engineering. There's also a planning report dated the 1st of February, 2021, which is recommending refusal of the application. And we also have a, a letter from Councillor Grimes dated the 1st of February, 2021, which is basically recommending refusal. I just wanted to ask, sir, in view of city planning's refusal report, would you like to defer this application to, to discuss the, the issues with them, or would you like the application heard today? In terms of the application presented, Mr. Chair, I don't think a, a deferral would, would advance this particular app development application any because uh, uh, the severance itself uh, would would not follow through because of the uh, the letters of, of objection uh, that have been submitted to committee from planning, uh, okay, so the alderman, etc. So you would like the application heard today? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay, thank you. Uh, if you could give the committee a uh, presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal, sir. Very good, Mr. Chairman. Yes, uh, presently this lot uh, that has a frontage of 1506 meters on it that has a one story um, frame dwelling that is in disarray and needs attention and repair. The proposal before you is to set the lot into two lots with the um, proposed construction of two detached homes on the properties. Um, the design of the homes um, have been prepared in, to fit with previous uh, proposals 
or approvals that have been given and some constructed at number 40, number 52, and number 59, 38th Street. Before you is uh, the severance that creates lots with a frontage of 7.53 and uh, FSIs that are in the range. The proposed FSI is 0.659, which is in keeping with previously approved FSIs within the community. We have FSIs uh, from 6, 0.63 as high as um, up into 0.71s. The design of the homes takes in consideration the main entrance uh, integrated with the front landscaping and emphasizing the building connection to the street. The, the uh, elimination of the downsloping driveway is beneficial because the city is trying to eliminate um, these down, downgraded uh, driveways and each, each house would have a positive slope driveway at 2% with integral garage. Um, with, with the application, the proposal complies in terms of height, front yard uh, setback complies and is consistent with adjacent properties. The building depth complies and creates a generous rear yard landscaping. Uh, it does add diversity of the building types and architectural styles that we see along 38th Street, some of which have been approved previously. Um, and adheres, most importantly, adheres to the City of Toronto policy that in attempt to increase the uh, number of housing units uh, to market uh, within, within uh, a community. What I should add is the designs itself and the severance is made specific to for the use of the brothers that will be living in each one of the homes in in um, in this uh, in this development. Uh, the intent is not for profit type of cons consideration, but rather for use, um, personal use uh, of the properties within the site. That is my submission. Um, I, you have before you uh, comparables of uh, decisions, committee adjustment decisions, re relaying to you the frontages, side yard setbacks, and also um, wall height of previous decisions within the community. I think I put forth that this does uh, meet with what has happened in this neighborhood before, and uh, I seek that you consider this approval. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? And being none, I'll move to the uh, individuals on our, our deputants. I have Ron Jameson. Are you there, Mr. Jameson? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, sir. Can you hear us? Yes. Yeah, can I get your full name so and address, please? Sure, absolutely. My name is Ron Jamison, and I live at number 1038 Street, so two houses away from the subject property. Now, the proposal before you fails to reflect the intent of policy 4.1.5 of the official plan, which requires development proposals to reflect a number of prevailing characteristics of a neighborhood, notably lot size and density. So I'd like to start by referring you to slide number 17 of the attachment to my letter of objection. Um, this is page 21 of the consolidated uh, version, which uh, has been filed in the AIC. I think we're just trying to bring that up right now. Just a moment, sir. We'll find it. Just so you can proceed. Sir, I would suggest you do your talking and we'll, we'll find it in a few moments. Okay. The proposal fit just reflect the prevailing frontage and lot size on this block on which number 14 is situated. The prevailing frontage on the block is 50 feet. 
and there are only four lots on the block that are comparable in size to what's being proposed by the applicant. The proposed lot size of 305 square meters is 18% below the required lot size of 370 square meters from the bylaw uh, 569-2013, and is half the prevailing lot size on the block, which is about 610 square meters. The proposed lot size is also 38% below the average lot size on the block, which is roughly 490 square meters. I'd like to, okay, we've got, we just about, we had it there a moment ago, slide number 20 of the attachment, uh, page 24, this one, yes. The proposal fails to reflect the prevailing density on the block. Um, as I'm showing you here, the proposed density at 0.66, which is the uh, cross-hatched one on the right, is nearly double the permitted uh, bylaw standard of 0 0.35 and more than double the average FSI of homes on the block, which is an average of 0.29. The prevailing density is actually between 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, as you can see from the bar on the left of this chart. Finally, the scale of the proposed homes out of proportion to the adjacent properties. So if we could go to slide 11, of the attachment, which could show the datums. The design of the proposed homes presents as a three-story structure. With the exception of 40A and 40B38, the homes on 38th Street are a mix of one and two-story structures. This slide shows the height of the proposed homes in relation to adjacent ones, which are representative of what's on the block. The home to the right is number 18, a two-story house currently under renovation, while the home on the left is a one-story bungalow. With the side wall height variance the applicant is seeking, the proposed homes are significantly higher than the two-story home at number 18, and there's been no attempt made to mitigate the differential in the design and massing of these homes. Uh, there are only a half dozen homes in the study area that I use that are remotely similar to what the applicant has proposed in terms of scale, and therefore, the proposal fails to reflect the prevailing height, scale, and building types on the block. And I therefore ask you to refuse this application. Do you have any questions? Thank you, sir. Any questions of the speaker? There being none, thank you, sir. We'll go to the next person on our list. I have a Alessandra Stratti. Are you there? Alessandra Stratti, are you there? Sorry. It's Bill Carter. Rep Hello. Yes, Alessandra. Hello. Stratton. Can you hear me? I'm representing Alessandra. Can I get Stratton. your name, sir? Name and address. That's William Carta, K A R D A. Your full name. At sir. fourteen. Beg your pardon. Your full name. William. Okay. Thank you. And your address. Carta. One four eight seven. Brentano Boulevard, Mississauga, L4X1A2. Okay, if you'd like to give uh, give us your views on this application. Yes, just briefly, uh, I'm a former vice chair of the uh, Committee of Adjustment for the City of Mississauga and a for former member of the Land Division Committee. I've been there for 25 years. I'm, I'm a retired consultant, and I was asked by the Stratty family to just make some comments on this application, so I'll be brief. I'm, I'm representing them pro bono for the owners of uh, 1838th Street. And in your file, you have a letter uh, from uh, the family uh, indicating uh, their concerns. And I just want to reiterate a couple of items. First of all, uh, I'm asking you to and I'm addressing all three applications, the land division and the two committee of adjustment applications. I'm asking you to look at these and refuse them because they do not meet the guidelines. First of all, the severance of the single family home into two lots for two oversized three story homes is an overdevelopment of that site. The variance that they address uh, four feet, which would allow this three-story mass of brick and concrete, would black out all windows on the south side from 
their natural light. Number three, the proposed three-story would extend 20 feet past the rear of their home, further blocking <coughs> the current sight lines that they have from the south side, and they will lose the enjoyment of the current open space in the backyard. The, this couple has plans and are underway uh, with the continuous upgrades to their interior for a fully modern home. And I think that's what should be done with this other house next door. I believe this does not meet our, meet our neighbor's approval or our approval, and the applications should be refused. We thank Councillor Mark Grimes, Ward 3, for his letter of support recommending refusal. And I, I think the committee uh, that put together uh, the report by Ron Jamison it was an excellent presentation and their support for refusal. Those are my comments, sir. Thank you, sir. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go to our next speaker on the list. I have a Karen Tulk, T-U-L-K. Are you there? Here, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, Matt. Hi. If you could uh, okay. please give us your views on this application, but I remind you, please don't repeat stuff we've already heard. We don't need to hear it again. Okay, um, I appreciate that, but you know, I'm only 25 feet away from the property line. Um, I share a mutual drive with my new neighbors at number 18. Um, so I would call attention to the photos that I've submitted that show exactly how close I am to that fence line. No, that's right. That's the proposed new view of what my house would look like. Look at my view. That's my house. Um, now the next photos. That's my deck. No, not this photo. Keep going. All right. So if you flip that around, there's the back of my yard. Um, the one previous was showing the view of the neighboring property. So you can see there the this is my view from my from my back door and from my porch. Uh, this is not where I want to start, but let's leave that up for now. So you know, I, I've been a lifelong resident of South Etobicoke. I spent 10 years renting in that area before I bought my home in 2003. For 18 years, I've enjoyed this beautiful yard space and had full sunlight in the yard, beautiful view of the neighboring uh, garden. Um, number 18 has had beautiful gardens over the years. Alessandra, um, you know, the soil is fantastic. My neighbor, my late neighbor Roy had lovely flowers all the way along the fence line going from right from the deck right to the back of the yard and he had a beautiful vegetable patch um, that grows, you know, tremendous amounts of, of harvest every year. You know, the photos do show how open my yard is to the neighboring yard at number 18 and how close I am to number 14. The proposal that has been submitted would replace this view with a very long, tall, blank wall, similar to the one in the first picture we pulled up, which is what has happened to another home on, on 23rd Street. So this would be my view instead of seeing the wide open space that I see now. So the application in my mind has failed to consider the impact of the overshadowing um, effects an impact on the neighboring properties with this proposed setback. Um, in existing to changing my existing view, the shade created by that structure would have a cooling effect on my yard throughout the year. Now, in the fall, winter, and spring, that's less enjoyment for being outside because you're not being able to go out without jackets on a, on a sunny day. Um, it actually is quite warm back there in the spring and fall. In the winter, that's potentially increasing my heating costs, um, you know, because I'm not going to be getting that sunlight effect, in, you know, onto my house. Uh, in the summertime, I have lovely natural shade from the tree canopy that's on my property and adjacent on the north side at 22. And uh, I say in the, in the last six months in the lockdown, I've spent a lot of time out in that yard. I've made upgrades to my rear deck and patio 
to further enjoy that backyard space. Um, I, I do plant all of my flowers in that immediate area, you know, right where my car was parked up to my back fence. So that's the biggest sunniest spot in my yard. I have lovely full foliage in the summer there all around that space and that will be lost if I lose that existing sunlight. Um, I'd also like to point out that my house was built in 1916 when Long Branch was a summer resort area. I bought my home because it retains that cottage feel. Currently, I hear boats on the water on warm summer days. I hear the waves crashing on the shoreline after storms and on windy days. And this proposal would also create a sound deadening effect by blocking the natural sounds that we would hear from the south. Um, I will say that if I had to buy my property now, and this was the view that I was look, going to be looking at, I would not be buying that in that property. And this home, you know, as a single, you know, female, um, this is my future retirement fund. So I'm definitely concerned about the negative impact this could have on my future investment with this rear setback. Madam, can you uh, when it's time please? for me to sell? Summarize, okay. I would definitely not object if the owner of number 14 were to build up the second floor so it's the same height as number 18 and as number 10, providing it stayed okay, on the you, same madam. existing thank footprint. You. Thank you. Well, I said so no setback. Next person on our list, uh, we have Nicola Walenta. Are you there? Nicola Walenta, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, can I get your Hello? name and address, please? My name is Nicola Walenta. I live at 28 36th Street. Okay, if you'd like to give us your thoughts on this application, but uh, please, uh, you don't have to re repeat material. It's already been stated by other people. I understand. Good afternoon, committee members. My name is Nicola Walenta, and I live at 28 36th Street. I'm appearing before the committee today to express my reasons as to why the proposed development located at 14 38th Street should not be approved. The lots on 36th, 37th and 38th Street are predominantly 50 foot lots on which there are large homes or bungalows of various different characteristics, yet all offering a pleasant streetscape. There are several 50 foot lots that were redeveloped recently, but instead of splitting the lot, large attractive homes were erected that reflected the characteristics of the neighborhood. Examples would include 16 and 2037th Street. Last year, the owners of 1437th also applied to this committee for permission to build a single new home on this 50 foot lot. On the corner of 36th Street and James Street, a 100 foot lot was split into two 50 foot lots on which two large attractive homes were built. And on 38th Street, numbers 29 and 35 now have new two story homes that built, were built without serving the 50 foot lots. In my part of Long Branch, Ontario Municipal Board approvals of severances at 4 James Street in 2011 and 20 James Street in 2015, along with 40 37th Street in 2016, ignited a flurry of severance applications on 36th Street and others. The owners of 30 and 32 36 launched severance applications in 2016 and 2017. Then owners of 38 and 70 36th Street followed suit. Owners who purchased number 11 also applied for a severance to split the lot, but later withdrew their application after the decision on number 38 was trimmed down, as did the owners of number 32. In each case, the applicants argued that approval decisions on James and 37th Street, along with severances on other streets, were reasons why their applications should be approved. In 2016, the house directly to the north of me, number 30, 36th Street, went to the Committee of Adjustment where it was turned down. It then went to the Ontario, Ontario Municipal Board who approved the split but turned down the variances because they did not reflect the character of the street and were too extreme. In 2019, it again went before the Committee of Adjustment regarding the variances. They were asking to put two tall soldier homes, each with an FSI of 0 0.70 onto 25 foot lots. According to the official plan, a 25 foot lot would only allow an FSI of 0.35. Once again, the Committee of Adjustment turned down the proposal based on the variances being too severe amongst other concerns. 
To date, severance applications on 36th Street have either been withdrawn or refused by T-Lab as not respecting and reinforcing the neighborhood character. Every time residents have expressed concerns about approval severance being used as precedence to justify further severances, these arguments were consistently dismissed by the OMB, and yet, in their decisions, they cited these previously approved severances as reasons for supporting their decisions. Therefore, the approval of number 14, 38th Street, will have a direct impact on me, even though I don't live on 38th Street. The owners of number 30, 36th Street have already told me that they are just waiting to see what approvals get passed in the area before submitting again. I absolutely understand that development and revitalization of neighborhoods is important to keep communities vibrant. Developers argue that they are providing affordable housing within the community. However, I fail to understand how homes that are typically selling now for $1.2 to $1.7 million are affordable. In closing, should the committee decide to approve 1438th Street, I feel strongly that it will set a precedent for the developers who purchase number 30 beside me and any other developer going forward the consequences of which will have a direct impact on me. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam. Thank you, Madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll move to the next or next person. I have a Stephen Vella. Are you there, sir? Oh. Yes, I am. Yes, uh, you can give us your views on this application, sir. And please don't repeat stuff we've already heard. It's, it's, not, it's not doing any favors to anyone repeating the same material over and over again. So tell us something yes, we I haven't heard. I won't do that. Okay. If this development at 1438th Street was a home for with an FSI of around 30.35 on a bylaw approved lot, I would not object and I don't think anyone else would either. Sadly, this developer wants to sever a 50 foot lot into two undersized lots with oversized dwellings. Our neighborhood is going through extreme development pressure. We have to send a clear message to development that variances for lot splitting that create undersized lots and variances for oversized dwellings will not be tolerated in Long Branch. My first experience with a lot severance was for development on 76 Ash in 2012, where the houses were built on two undersized lots. Some of the trees were removed and some not adequately protected. I have a picture in my, uh, my presentation uh, that shows what the, what the property looks like now. There were five trees that were lost because of development on one regular size lot that was made into two undersized lots. The plantable space has been significantly reduced. In fact, the house on the right is building a pool. There will never be a mature tree in their backyard. In less than 10 years, over 100 applications have been requested for severance. There has only been 13 refused. And I'm happy to say that four of those refusals were from 38th Street. The refusal in uh, 2020 is not included because the applicant is uh, appealing to T-Lab. So over 170 oversized houses were built on undersized lots in less than 10 years. And the neighbors have to live with looming oversized houses forever. There is nothing gentle about what is happening to our neighborhood of Long Branch. And as the previous person spoke, every one of these is an excuse for another builder to go along and try to do the same thing again. When walking through my neighborhood, there are many severances with skinny monolithic houses. He seems so disconnected from the neighborhood and the mass is imposing. I do not like the houses looming over me as I walk down the street. There is no continuity and no connection to the street at all. There have been many large scale developments in Long Branch along the main thoroughfares. However, trying to increase density one property at a time is bad planning. Increasing density for its own sake is bad planning. The applicants planners make a statement that does not tell the whole story about 38th Street. They say there is a total of five similar community of adjustment decisions for severances and minor variance approvals that have been granted on 38th Street and three developments have been completed. Well, that's only part of the story. In 2013, there was an approval at number 50. In 2015, there was an approval on number 40. In number 16, there was a refusal at number 30, but it was appealed to the OMB and it was approved. In 2016, the approval of severance of uh, nine of number nine, but it was uh, was refused at T-Lab 
2017, a refusal of the severance at 15 by the committee. The applicant appealed, but he never, uh, but he never, but he withdrew. 2017, the refusal of the severance at 30 at 37. In 2018, they they reapplied, and it was approved. But when they when the application went to T Lab, the applicant failed to appear. And last year in 2020, the refusal of the severance at 75 by the Committee of Adjustments. This one is currently an appeal to T Lab. Now, yes, there were completed, there were three completed, but all before the Long Branch Character Guidelines were approved, and the last five were refused including the committee of adjustment refusal in 2020 and that application was very similar to this one please support the neighbors council of grimes and the planning department by refusing this application for a severance thank you very much thank you very much uh does the committee have any questions of the speaker there being none i'll move to the next person on the list i have a sheila carmichael are you there i'm here thank you Ms. Ms. Carmichael. My name is Sheila Carmichael. Yep. Uh, can you, uh, do you have something new to tell us that we haven't already heard? That was my plan. Okay, then please, t please tell us something new. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sounds like a song. Um, I live on uh, 36th Street and I'm representing the uh, Long Branch Tree Canopy Preservation and Enhancement Committee. Uh, I wonder if a letter could be brought up that was submitted by Judy Gibson, who's the chair of the Tree Canopy uh, Committee. It was submitted uh, dated February 2nd. Yep, I would say that's it. Okay. Yep. Uh, so today I'd like to address the impact of the proposed lot severance and oversized new builds on the health of a neighboring birch tree. Uh, see page two, figure one. The front, yep, yeah, that's it. Uh, the front view of uh, 1438 Street showing existing birch tree, which is located on the adjoining property to the south, but is in close proximity to the shared southern boundary line of the subject property. At this point, we can reference the stats at the top of the page. Canopy loss on adjacent properties to approve severances between 2009 and 2018 has been recorded at 24%. Similar bills of this nature, even though tree protection policies were followed, have resulted in trauma to neighboring trees, with the end result that the trees have died. And there have been some incredibly significant losses within Long Branch in very short periods of time of supposedly protected mature trees. On page three, figure two, it shows the tree canopy at risk with this application outlined in red. Uh, sorry, that's on uh, page three, I believe. Yes, now outlined in red. So that's the uh, the, the uh, tree canopy that is at risk. And there's increased per impervious surface and loss of plantable space forever removed as a result of the variance being requested in yellow. On page three, figure three showing permanent holes in the tree canopy and loss of plantable space as a result of severance and variances prior to T-Lab and prior to Long Branch Neighborhood Character Guidelines. So it's quite significant once these houses go in, that's it, it's blank space. The picture below on the same page shows two houses similar to as proposed on, in this application. And a tree has been planted, if you look carefully, in the middle of the front lawn directly below the power line. So this tree is doomed before it even starts. And it's in emphasizing how insufficient plantable space is available in similar builds. Page six, figure five, showing the front view of 1436 Street. Now, this is interesting. The applicant proposes removal of the existing hump in the lawn, but does not acknowledge the tree roots will be there. Tree roots extend two to three times beyond the drip line of the tree canopy. No tree preservation plan has been provided by the applicant. This section of 38th Street already has a serious lack of mature tree canopy, and this particular birch tree, if damaged, would represent a major loss. The proposal for the subject site would forever remove critical plantable space for the potential of any large canopy trees in the future. And even more alarmingly, it will encourage, as had been mentioned before, more applications of this nature in the immediate area who are literally waiting in the wings for this approval so that they, in turn, can put their applications into committee for more land severance approvals 
Without your due diligence and conviction, our remaining mature tree canopy and green infrastructure would be devastated with no hope of recovery. And this is contrary to the official plan policies. We therefore request that this application for consent and variances be refused by the members of the Committee of Adjustment. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Does the uh, you. committee have any questions of the speaker? And being none, we'll go to the next speaker on the list. That is Andy Choles. Mr. Choles, are you there? I think my uh, neighbors have, uh, I'm sorry, my name is Andy Choles. I'm with the Long Branch Neighborhood Association. I live on uh, Jasmine Avenue. Okay, so, um, so we, we've heard a lot of a lot of material already. Uh, can you please not go through stuff we've already heard before? Can you tell us something we haven't heard? <laughs> I think my neighbors expressed the uh, the case very well. The the OP is the deemed uh, twelve meter frontage is the frontage for lots. There are smaller frontages, but the they seem to pay attention to the size of house. If you have a proper size house on a proper size lot, there's there's no issue. Soldier houses, such are proposed on this one, are tall, skinny, crowd the streetscape, block the light, and rob people of their privacy. Skinny houses mean the main floor is built over the garage. That means the deck coming out the back is robbing from privacy. The people inside are treated to stairs everywhere. Stairs up, stairs down, stairs down to the backyard. It is not a, a house design that suits uh, a lot such as ours. At some point, you have to decide that the lot is too small for a detached house. I ref I would urge that you refuse this application uh, on 38th Street. Thank you very much, sir. Any questions of the speaker? I have next person on the list, William Carta. Are you there, sir? Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. William Carta uh, represented 1838th Street. He was, I believe, the second speaker. Okay, all right, thank you. Thank we you. We do have Sandy Donald. So I was going to ask, Sandy Donald, are you there? Sandy Donald, hello? are you there? Uh, yes, hello. Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, um, uh, I'm speaking on behalf of Sandy Donald. I'm his wife, uh, Donna Donald. Okay. Unfortunately, he's in a tea. Okay. He's in. A, he's in a tea. He's in a tea lab meeting right now. Okay, thank you, madam. Uh, if you could give us your views on this application, but can you please not repeat stuff we've already heard? Absolutely. Uh, my name is Donna Donald. I live at 3436th Street. Uh, Long Branch Character Guidelines Compliance Review for 1438th Street. The objective of the guidelines is to identify the neighborhood's key character defining qualities and to ensure that future developments are designed in a manner which is contextually sensitive and responsive to the neighborhood character in keeping with policy 4.1.5 of the city's official plan. The guideline sections have been ordered within this document to reflect the current structure of policy 4.1.5. It goes to the city council, the intent of the official plan. Lot severances. The neighborhood is characterized by moderate to wide lot frontages, ranging between 9.0 meters to 15.24 meters. Specifically, approximately 60% of all residential lots located south of Lake Shore Boulevard contain lot frontages equal to or greater than 12.2 meters. Recent lot severances, which were dispersed throughout the neighborhood, produced comparatively narrow frontages, 6.0 meters to 8.0, that do not meet the intent and purpose of the zoning bylaw. Key Long Branch characters, 3.2.2 building phase. Soldier house design and garage not compatible with street. Does does locate does locate garages back from the primary plane. Failed. 3.3.1 roofs. Does not reinforce existing reference lines and street rhythm. Failed. 3.3.2 front entrance design. Integral garages dominates the primary facade. Failed. 3.3.3 windows. No windows on the front uh, front floor facing street is not respectful of the balance of solid and glazed surfaces of buildings along the street. Fails. 3.4 driveway and garages. Integrated, integrated garage not compatible with adjust adjacent houses or block. Garage is not behind the primary plane of the front facade. Fails. Uh, 
5.2 front yard landscape, dominated by hard surface driveways. Lack of trees in the front yard that are dominated by hard surfaces are incompatible with the character of Long Branch. Failed. 3.5.3 side yard setbacks. Reductions are not compatible with adjacent houses and blocks. Failed. Um, 3.6.1 trees. Does not ensure adequate separation to provide for trees to grow maturely. Summary and conclusion. No changes will be made through re rezoning, minor variance, consent, or other public action that are out of, out of keeping with the physical character of the geographic neighborhood. Page five of the character guidelines and four to four, to four of the official plan. <laughs> this application should be rejected based on the fact that it does not meet 14 out of 16, 88%, the characteristics of Long Branch as stated in the character guidelines. This application does not even come close. It fails the official neighborhood character uh, policy 4.1.5. Recent lot differences, which are dispersed throughout the neighborhood, um, produce comparatively narrow frontages. Uh, oh, I'm sorry about that. Um, I just finished saying that. Sorry about that. Long branch character defining conditions 9.0 meters to 15.24 lot frontages and three. 35.0 meters, 45.0 lot depths, page 27 and 35. Lake 10 Lake Prom, decision on the weight of the character guidelines with respect to their weight. I find that the guidelines can be used as evidence of good planning criteria by which to evaluate this development. They were the result of a special study by planners retained by the city who in public consultation, <coughs> excuse me, with residents in the area prepared a report to council. Uh, they were subsequently approved by council after the public consultation and thus are a clear indi indication of the city's view of good planning. For this reason, this application needs to be denied. Thank you. Thank you, Madam. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, we'll go back to uh, the agent. Mr. Rosa, are you there? Mr. Rosa, are you there? Yes, I am, Mr. Chairman. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you, sir. You've heard the uh, comments from Very the good. previous speakers. If you'd like to respond. I have, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, in response to the various comments. Um, firstly, the scale of the home that's being proposed uh, is not considered a three story, but rather a two story home, which is an allowed use within the zoning bylaw. Height is not a variance. Only the sidewall face is uh, a variance by um, a couple of feet. The, there was a comment that this is going to be a brick and concrete type of structure. That is not intent. I think the proposed finishes are going to conform to, to, the, um, to the neighborhood uh, characteristics in terms of finishes. There is no length or depth variances being proposed. So in terms of it's projecting into the rear yard or, or, or how it's considered in terms of length or depth, this is not a variance. I'm a bit confused by um, one of the speakers, uh, Karen Talk. I'm not sure exactly where she lived and her, her rear view to this lot. So I assume that her backyard is facing the backyard of um, the proposed development. So I don't foresee any effect as a result of uh, uh, denial of sunlight or or, um, or viewing uh, as represented by this particular neighbor. Um, in terms of uh, not objecting to any type of top up, given the type of floor space index that are dispersed throughout this neighborhood in the order of 0.6 and uh, even higher, that could substantially lead to a home as a top up renovation or a new construction of a single family home that could bring FSIs in a number that is excessive to the character of the neighborhood. So rather than that, we're creating a more affordable type of use of uh, GFA and um, and its validity in terms of potential use and 
the, the cost factor of its construction. There is no protected trees that are being removed. The, the birch tree that's being sited at the front is going to be a protected tree. Um, and there's no intent to remove any protected tree. The existing birch has a, a diameter of 0.2, well under the 0.3 that is considered a protected tree, but the intent is to protect the tree. The remaining trees on site are small type of trees, and it's the intent is to plant um, a treescape in the backyards of each one of these uh, residences to create a further canopy uh, that is in, in, in light of um, the characteristics of the neighborhood. Um, we, we have, we have uh, the evolution of comments uh, coming to nine and 15 meter wide lots. Uh, however, there's a significant number of lots that are well under the required um, frontage the dimension. We have lots in the order of 7.62 um, as many, many lots in this neighborhood. Um, so that is my, my comment and response. I think the development is, is not there to try to impose, but rather to make use of um, oversized lots that will assist the City of Toronto in fulfilling its need to provide more dwelling units that are required. And I emphasize again, this is for personal use. This are two brothers that are building to live there. That is my um, response, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Thank you, Mr. Rosa. Uh, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Um, I'm going to move for refusal. The um, severance, the lot frontage and lot areas are not in uh, context of the area, so therefore the should not be approved. Therefore, none of the variances should be approved. Uh, not minor in nature. Okay, we have a recommendation, a motion from Mr. Palmer to refuse. Ms. Alderson seconds. All those in favor? And motion carries. Mr. Rosa, your application is refused. Thank you for your time, Mr. Chairman, members of the committee. Good afternoon. Next item on our list is item number 34, 1734 St. Clair Avenue West. I have two people registered to speak. I have a Bill Ross, who is the agent. Are you there, sir? Yes, I am. Can I get your full name and address, please, sir? Bill Ross, number nine, Beswick Lane, Uxbridge, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. I wanted to ask, uh, and I don't know if you can clear it up or maybe uh, Mr. Carvalino can. The last planning report we have on this application was dated the 27th of June, 2018, and it recommended deferral, and then committee deferred it. Uh, what has happened since then? Because we don't have a subsequent report from city planning, uh, a more up-to-date okay. comment. Can you tell us? Can you tell yeah, I can address what's taken place? Yes, we we went to staff and we dealt with uh, their concerns that they had with regards to their uh, original report, and uh, we met their expectations as to what they were expecting. We changed our drawings. We reduced from uh, eight variances to five variances, and staff were happy with it. I asked myself the other day um, uh, why Mr. there was a could you staff put report. Materials up on the screen, please? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Can I carry on? Yes, go ahead. Okay, I, I, I also got a, a reply from the planning department uh, on January 29th. No planning report is, is, is submitted because all of the concerns have been addressed and there are no conditions that we want to impose. 
That was from staff. Mr. Borsell, do we do we have do we have that memo? Because I don't have anything here from planning saying we have no objection. Sorry, through you, Mr. Chair. The only uh, things that we have from planning are the one report here dated June 27th, 2018, and three separate email chain correspondence dated January 6th, 2021, November 20th, 2020, and September 4th, 2020, respectively. Because, uh, sir, we we have no we have no comments from uh, city planning indicating they have no objection. Well, I, I have a comment from your staff. Um, I guess it's from Amina, Amina Khan. It could be, sir, that you may have some. We don't she, have it, or, right. they, or they didn't send it to oh. us. Mr. Carvalina, okay. are, you, are you aware of any uh, other city memoranda on this? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair and Mr. Chair, we're. I'm looking for the email. I do recall having a discussion with staff about this one. Um, Give me one minute. In the meantime, I'd like to ask a question of the applicant, or is it an agent for the applicant? I'm not sure. Yes, Ms. Alderson, please proceed. Okay, while we're waiting, um, I have a question. This, uh, this particular property, this particular property is a commercial property uh, within a, a BIA, the St. Clair Gardens BIA. I'm just wondering, what is the intention? Uh, I couldn't really make out what the intention was from the plans. Will there be commercial left at grade? Or is it going to be straight residential? And if so, I have a, a problem with that. No, the commercial is left at grade. Sir, we can't hear you, you have to speak up. Yeah, the commercial is going to be left on the first floor. On the first floor. So then it's a, yeah. a basically, uh, it's, it's already a two-story building with residential above, and it will become a four-story building with three floors of residential with one floor of commercial. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Okay. Thanks for clarifying. Thank you. Uh, sir, have you seen the... Uh report from transportation services dated the 22nd of january 2021 yes we, we have apparently have no objection to your parking variance provided that you uh make a payment for payment in lieu of parking have you had the opportunity to read that report yes we have okay uh with respect to the uh mr carvelina did we find any other emails on from planning uh, Mr. Chair, the only email we have on file is from September 4th, and it says that they can confirm that they had discussions um, and that uh, it can be placed back on the next available hearing date. Um, but that's the extent of, and it's in your uh, the standard materials that you have. Okay, thank you. Okay, sir, if you want to finish off your presentation then, and I guess uh, we'll, we'll deal with your application today, but you're aware that we don't have anything from any up-to-date report from city planning other than the, the last formal memo we have from them is 2018, requesting a deferral. Okay, well, I have, I have another one from... Uh, a, uh, well, is, we don't have this. An, so I, I, the Mr. issue is... I know, this... Mr. Chair, just to... Sorry to interrupt. I did just receive an email from uh, staff, and there is a January 6th email uh, that was sent to staff from community planning, and I will share that with you. It oh, states, thank you. Uh, as long as there have been no changes to the applicant's submission since my comments of uh, November 20th, I am still okay with it being scheduled. That's what we have. But that that's... Okay, uh, we uh, we'll just have to we'll have to just probably assume the comments from transport from uh, city planning are fairly neutral because they they don't seem to say anything one way or the other on your application other than it can be rescheduled. So if you want to make your case, sir, if you could uh, just finish your presentation. Uh, yes, well, we we've also canvassed the area. We have sixteen letters of support uh, from from local people and the. Uh, uh, support from the BIA as well. The variances that we're asking for are all minor from staff's uh, 
comments to, make, to us that uh, they don't have any changes that they want they wanted to make, and that's why they didn't issue a staff report. No planning report is submitted because all concerns have been addressed and there are no conditions that we want in, to impose. That was written on January 29th, uh, came from Amina Khan. All right, thank you, sir. Uh, again, we don't have a copy of that memo, uh, that email, but uh, as, be that as it may, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? Okay, we have one other person registered to speak. That is an Anna Maria Vaca. Are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yes, Ms. Vaca, do uh, you have the opportunity to, to, to give us your views on this application? Uh, so I, Anna Maria Vaca, I'm representing um, my dad, Giorgio Boltieri and Giuseppina Boltieri, who are the adjacent neighbors. They are at address 1736 St. Clair Avenue West. Uh, they are strongly objecting to the application to construct the third, the second floor rear, plus the third and fourth floor addition uh, for the following reasons. And I'll keep it simple and to the point. Uh, it is not a minor variance. It doesn't meet the criteria for it. Uh, the official plan is not maintained for that zone. And thirdly, but most importantly, is the building's over 100 years old, and it's not structurally sound to support the additional floors. So that is a huge concern uh, among with any uh, others. Uh, but uh, just to, to reiterate that we are in objection to the application. Okay, thank you very much, Madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? A question for staff. Is this part of St. Clair, part of the avenues, designated avenues? Don't know. You, Mr. Chair, I'm not aware. Okay. It's part of the BIA. Okay, thank you. Any further? Uh, no questions of the speaker. I'll go back to the agent. Mr. Ross, are you still there? Mr. Ross, are you still are you, there? You're still there? Yes, can you? You heard the comment yes, I am. from the previous speaker if you'd like to uh, respond. Um, Yes, we, we feel that we meet the four tests of the bylaw. We, we are adjacent to them. We un understand that the structure has to be uh, uh, reconfigured in some manner to structurally to make this thing work. We'll be having it done by professional engineers that design buildings of this nature. And uh, we're not really uh, providing any additional uh, problems to the people next door. Will be done on our side of the building, and uh, and that's basically all I've got to say. It's going to be it's going to be done professionally by a, a regular uh, engineer and approved by the city. Okay. Are you still there? Okay, sir. Can can you tell the committee the the makeup of the units that you're proposing to to put in this? Uh, in this development, are, are they, what are they, one bedroom, two bedroom? Can you tell the committee? We haven't laid them out completely yet. You have which? We haven't laid them out for the interior alterations to the, to the building yet. Okay, thank you. Okay, Does thank the you. Uh, com committee have any further questions of the speaker? And then could I get a uh, motion on this application, please? Yeah, Mr. Chair, I think this is a very reasonable uh, multi-story mixed-use proposal on a on a busy street where um, multi-story mixed-use uh, development is appropriate. I find the variances to be in keeping with the four tests under the Planning Act, and um, I move for approval subject to the transportation com condition for payment in lieu for two office parking spaces. Okay, thank you, Mr. Taylor. Someone to second that motion? I'd be happy to second that motion. Ms. Alderson seconds. All in favor? 
The motion carries unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved, subject to uh, transportation services condition. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Item number 35, 19 and 21, Old Oak Drive. I have one person to speak. That is Kevin Betchard. Uh, sir, yes, uh, good. Sir, we can't hear yes. you. You have, uh, you have another, a number of devices on. Just speak, speak into your telephone and turn off your other devices. Okay, I, uh, I'm sorry. I have my, uh, I have my uh, one device on my computer. Can you hear me now? Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Yeah, we can hear you, sir. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, perhaps I just. Okay, so uh, I just yes, uh, it's. Can... I just wanted to ask you. Can you get your full name and address, please? Yes, my name is Kevin Bechard, uh, B E C H A R D. I am at uh, 201 Millway Avenue. Uh, Suite 19, uh, Vaughan, Ontario. Okay, thank you, sir. I wanted to ask, there's a report here from, two, uh, we two have two reports, Urban Forestry with their recommended condition, and City Planning, their report of November 5th, 2020, and they're recommending refusal. So I wanted to know, would you, uh, in view of City Planning's comment, would you like to defer your application so that you can discuss this issue with uh, City Planning? Uh, no, uh, we do not wish to defer the application. We do wish to speak to the City Planning report as part of our deputation. Okay, uh, very well. If you'd like to uh, uh, go uh, give us a presentation on uh, what you see as the merits of your proposal and specifically the uh, with respect to the city planning's comments. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, my name is Kevin Bechard. I'm a uh, pl land use planner. Uh, I'm a senior associate with Weston Consulting. Uh, we're representing Kevin Liu, who is the owner of the property. And as you've noted, two separate applications. Uh, I have them listed on my agenda as 35A and 35B. They're very similar applications, A0230 backslash 20 EYK and A0231 backslash 20 EYK. Uh, the purpose of uh, this application and similarly uh, the uh, subsequent application we'll be discussing uh, is to uh, seek variances from the citywide zoning bylaw to um, permit uh, 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 specific variances uh, to a uh, proposed constructed dwelling on the street. The subject property in dealing with uh, 20 Old Oak Drive is located on the east side of Old Oak Drive at Dundas Street West. Um, the property was subject to a previous minor variance in 2016 uh, uh, to establish uh, two lots uh, uh, as uh, are being uh, uh, indicated in the uh, severance document. The subject property at 21 Old Oak Drive is now currently are, uh, occupied by a partially constructed single uh, detached residence. And if you were by the area, you'd see that the buildings are uh, substantially complete, uh, save and except the exterior cladding on the structures themselves. Uh, immediately adjacent and flanking the structure are three-story, uh, uh, three three-story uh, rental housing or rental units um, uh, with an access uh, off of Old Oak Drive. And in the broader context, there are single family homes uh, predominantly in the area. Uh, the property is uh, designated neighborhoods uh, in terms of the city's land use plan. Uh, it's zoned RM uh, bracket U2 bracket X18 in the citywide zoning bylaw. As I mentioned a little bit earlier, the property was subject to a, a Committee of Adjustment minor variances and consent applications in September 2016. Those applications effectively created the lotting fabric that's uh, there today, and that is described as four single family uh, residential lots, uh, separate residential lots. The applications uh, for variances today uh, uh, come about and result from uh, the construction of the proposed dwellings and the stop work order that was issued by the City of Toronto Building Department in March 
of uh, 2019. The order was issued uh, because of a minor construction error, which resulted in the building having inconsistently uh, been uh, showing inconsistency with the approved plans. The construction error related to the pouring of a foundation that was uh, slightly larger than, the, than approved and uh, resulting in a slightly larger floor plate, which is generating the variances that we've uh, requested. I've sent a letter and I think it's up on screen uh, now. Thank you very much. If we go to page four, excuse me, four of that letter, there is a table. I'm sorry, it's at the top of um, page four. And this is, uh, okay, I think that's, uh, I think that that's it. Essentially, what is happening here, the table provides a comparison of the current um, proposed variances and the previous variances in 2016. I want to speak to the FSI. The FSI that was approved in 2016 is at 0 0.87. The proposed FSI of this uh, uh, requested variance is 0 0.94. But it's important that I discuss or, or detail the nature of that variance. There was a change in the manner in which GFA is calculated uh, between the two variances. And 0.89, uh, or the 0.94 uh, proposed variance, 0.89 of that variance uh, is without the inclusion of the stairway. So let me try and phrase this a little more clearly. Essentially, um, the increase in FSI uh, relates to 0 0.02. It's a 0 0.02 increase in FSI, representing a proposed increase in GFA of approximately 3.67 meters. So while the application uh, is uh, describing a proposed increase in FSI from 0.87 to 0.94, or approximately 0 0.07, only 0 0.02 of that is related to the building error. The balance of the increase in the FSI uh, relates to a change in the manner in which the, F the GFA was calculated. And that specifically, and it's detailed in the letter that we provided, relates to the inclusion Sir, of uh, stairways. Sir, can you summarize? Yes, essentially that is the summary, except for one uh, a point, it's a, it's a very minor uh, application. Uh, the difference in the staff report uh, is that it does not recognize that the majority of the FSI increase is related to a change in the way that the GFA is calculated. So, so it overstates the, um, uh, the, uh, the nature of the FSI increase in this application. So we believe that if this is an application that uh, is minor in nature uh, and it meets the tests uh, under the uh, Ford you, test. Thank uh, you, sir. Thank okay, you. thank you. Mr. Kumerick, you had a question? I had a question. That, that was a good explanation for uh, number 29. Can, can you um, do the same uh, recalculation for number 19, Oak Drive, where you're at, the FSI is being sought at 1.19? Yes, exactly. It's the exact same condition. If I go to uh, page four of that letter, um, uh, I'm going to tell you that in, in real terms, the increase in GFA there is 4.13 uh, square meters. And uh, of the um, 0.1 increase in um, FSI, 0 0.03 is attributable to the uh, construction error. So similarly, uh, uh, it's a very minor uh, 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 variance that's being applied for. The extent of the FSI is overstated because of a recal uh, a change in the way that the GFA was recalculated. I can only add one more thing, if I might. Uh, there is an email that we uh, 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 made sure was put into the committee's hands. It's by city staff, and they describe how that uh, change occurred. And it's an email dated August 19, 2020 uh, from city staff, which describes the error that they made. 
Uh, sir, can I ask, sir, the, I ask the, uh, the, the buildings in question are already built. Does this, uh, or they're under construction, are, does, does this change the exterior appearance of the building? Uh, no, not whatsoever. No? No. Okay, thank you. Okay. Any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Can I just get a confirmation from staff that there is, in fact, a change in the way that you have that? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Any further questions of the speaker? Any further questions of the speaker? Yeah, just one. Oh, Mr. Taylor? Yes, uh, sir, are you aware of an okay with uh, ur urban forestry condition number two? Uh, Ed, no, I'm not aware of that condition, but uh, if you could, re I don't have a copy of it. Oh. Um, it has it has to do with a private tree. I, I can I can I can read you the detail on that. Please do. The the I'm sorry. sir the the condition from urban forestry is that you submit a complete application for a permit to injure or remove a privately owned tree. That's their condition. Uh, that condition is acceptable. Thank you. Thank you. Could I get a motion on this? Can I get a motion on this? I think I'd like to move approval. However, I want to put some kind of, I don't know, uh, pre uh, precursor to it in, in, in that I understand planning's concern about setting a precedent on this FSI number. And if this were a new application before us today asking for these FSIs, I think we'd be moving refusal. So I don't know how we can approve this, but try to not make it a precedent, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I believe the explanation finally makes sense um, and is justifiable. And I believe, therefore, the request is, is minor. Um, I believe also that what's mitigating for this specific site is the fact that it's on the corner of Dundas Street. It's not in the middle of the neighborhood. And again, I think that mitigates the um, what on the surface seems as an excessive FSI. Having said all of these precursors, I would on that basis uh, recommend approval with the forestry condition number two. Thank you, sir. Someone to second that motion? Mr. Taylor seconds, all those in favor? That motion carries unanim unanimously, sir. Your application has been unanimously approved subject to urban forestry conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Yeah. Item number 36, 1218 Islington Avenue. I have two people registered to speak. Uh, I have Ida Evangelista is the agent for the applicant. Madam, are you there? Hi, Mr. Chair. Yes, Heidi Evangelista on behalf of the owners of 1218 in Lincoln. Thank you, Madam. I just wanted to let you to ask. We have uh, a report from Urban Forestry with a recommended condition. We have yes. uh, development engineering comments from the 4th of October. And uh, I'll just wanted to ask, I think the revised plans you've submitted show the uh, show the, the conveyance that that they had requested along Islington Avenue? Correct. Yes, okay. And there's a report. And, from they, and they are in support. Yeah. Okay, thank you. 
Uh, we also have a report from city planning dated the 1st of February, 2021. They're recommending refusal. So I wanted to ask you, would you like to defer your application to, to uh, discuss discuss it with further with city planning or would, or would you like the committee to hear your application today? Uh, no, Mr. Chair, uh, we've already deferred from November of 2018 and we're now in a position to move forward. Okay, so you'd like, we, you'd, you'd like the committee to hear your application to today? I'm sorry, Mr. Chair? Yeah, you want to move forward today? I do. Yeah, and so if you could give us a brief presentation on what you see are the merits of your proposal. Uh, again, uh, if you have five minutes, madam. Yeah, okay. So if you go to page one of the subject property, um, you'll see that the purpose of this application is to sever 1218 Islington into two lots, same size, to be developed with two detached dwellings. Planning staff have reviewed approximately the first block and are of the opinion this does not fit the area. We can not only focus on the adjacent properties, the concept of the neighborhood and community goes beyond those parameters. 1218 Islington is three doors in from Bloor Street, where as you see from the submission I did, if you stand in my at the backyard of 1218, you'll see there's a 10 story condominium building and along with office buildings, the TTC, Islington TTC hub as um, and the Kipling West GO station are right across the street. These areas are, <clears throat> excuse me, these areas under the growth plan requires major, major transit station areas or priority transit corridors or subway lines to be planned for density targets. Those that are serviced by subways requires 200 residents and jobs per hectare. The proposed redevelopment will provide a much more attractive, comfortable, and safe pedestrian environment than what currently exists on the lot without overdeveloping. If we put one home on this property, we'll have one house of approximately 3,500 square feet, whereas adding two homes allows for light and air as opposed to a large, monstrous home. As I walked through the neighborhood, I came across bungalows, two stories, townhomes, strip plazas. The official plan states our neighborhoods are where we connect with people to develop a common sense of community, a diverse area. This will be harmonious blend of past, present, and what is to come. These two homes being proposed are at two major arterial roads, Bloor and Islington. Physical change is and has occurred in this area, as you see from my submission, of all homes, all lots that have been severed. Do we truly believe that creating two lots is going to destabilize the neighborhood? I respectfully submit that it will not. Neighborhoods will not stay frozen in time. Neighborhoods are subject to physical change in the form of additions and infill housing. The photos that you see will show if you take a look from the rear yard of the, of the home, you'll see the condominium building and you'll see what is around. Um, it's characteristic and will not destabilize the area. This is an urban area. There's a diverse range of homes and lot sizes as you see through the submission and the photos that I provided to you. What we are proposing will maintain an appropriate relationship with the surrounding area and will be compatible and will get along with the homes that are currently there. The homes proposed have many characteristics of other homes in the area and will not destabilize the neighborhood, but allow a continued evolution of the area. The neighborhood is undergoing regeneration. The proposed consent and variances will facilitate reinvestment in this area in a manner that respects the planned context and existing built forms of the neighborhood and minor form of intensification. Two homes, part one of an FSI of 0.75 and part two of an FSI of 0.74, I respectfully submit that we are not asking to do anything or to build anything different than what you already see in this neighborhood. When you, when you take your dog out for a walk and you walk through the neighborhood, you're not just gonna walk the first five houses, you're gonna walk through the community you're going to see 
what we are proposing actually is already there. And I may add that we are three houses in from Bloor and Islington on a main, two major arterial roads with a TTC hub right at the corner. We want to intensify this area. There's a huge demand. No supply, huge demand. And with this, I respectfully submit that these two homes will re not result in any impact on neighboring properties, nor will it adversely impact the character of the neighborhood. There are homes on Chauncey, on Islington of 7.60, 4.27. Madam, can you summarize, please? And I, I summarize by saying that you will see along Islington, Chauncey, around the corner, there are homes, our lots of 7.62 and less. Okay, thank you, madam. And for this, thank I respectfully you. submit that. Thank this you. Is does the, does the committee have any questions of the speaker? I have a question. Yes. Yes. I was wondering if the applicant had considered uh, semi-detached dwellings as opposed to two, uh, two detached dwellings. Um, we did discuss it with planning when we originally um, submitted, but we were actually steered away from that because there are not many semi-detached other than the towns that are uh, about a block away. Okay, thank you. Any further questions of the thank speaker? You. I have uh, one other speaker to on uh, deputant on this. I have a Nancy Bielis. Are you there? Nancy Bulis, are you there? Hello, yes, this is Nancy yes. Bulis. Hi, can I get your uh, full name Nancy and address, please? Hello. Madam, can I get your full name and address? Uh, my full name is... Madam, where are you? My name is Nancy, and I live at... Can you hear me? No, madam, you're breaking up on us. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh. Okay, my name is Nancy Bullis. I live at 1216 Islington Avenue. Please proceed, madam. And I sent a letter in on, thank you. I sent a letter in on February 2nd. Do you have that letter? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, then i just like to summarize. Um, that building two oversized homes on two undersized lots is not a minor variance and not characteristic of detached residential home oversized lots. There are 20 variants for the two proposed severed lots, and this looks like there is not even an attempt at complying with the bylaws. I'm concerned the increase. And the extended roof into the side yard setback could cause snow and ice damage on my roof and my sidewalk as as um and and rain spillage into the basement and cause leakage. Um the the extended setback at the back could also affect the in the backyard. And I do not think that it could kill that. I do not see this application. As beneficial to the neighborhood, the extended back of the house. Oh, I also said that the neighbors have never asked me about their proposed changes to 12. Madam, are you there? Can you hear me? Yeah, no, we're having. Can you hear me? You're breaking up, madam. Oh, sorry. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Can you hear me now? Yep. Thank you. I, I, this is to summarize the letter and then to add a few things to it. Uh, I'm concerned about the, the increase in the grade at the front. Could affect the drainage. The water has to go somewhere. Is it going to come here? Um, I'm also worried about there's an extension at the top, top of the roof that, that comes into the side yard setback. And, and I'm worried that the snow and ice could fall on the sidewalk. Um, there's also a pine tree in the backyard, and I'm worried that this could kill 
full, the extension into the back could kill uh, my tree. So having this very tall and very long building beside me will take out my light. Yeah, in my kitchen window, I won't be able to see the street and the backyard. Uh, it will it will affect the light in the backyard as well. And is uh, not characteristic is uh, they they single family home and uh, I ask that that um, I also say that of the two the two properties they're they're asking for ten variances each. 20 variances, including the law, which is not, and, um, I do not see that that's an attempt to comply with the bylaws and they're there for a reason. And I, I just feel that it is a disruption to this neighborhood and it's a great inconvenience to me. I ask that you uh, refuse this application. Mm -hmm. I object to this application. Thank you, madam. Uh, any questions of the speaker? Yep. I'll go back to the uh, agent. Uh, Ms. Ms. Evangelista, are you there? Ms. Evangelista, are you there? I'm here. Hello? Hello? Yes, Ms. Evangelista, are you there? Can you hear me? I am. Can you? Yeah, yes. yes, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yes. Did you hear the comments okay. from uh, from Miss Bulis? Uh, I, I did. I did, Mr. Chair. Yeah. If you so, could, uh, um, if, if you could respond, please. Yes. Okay. So, um, if you turn to your my submission, uh, page two, you'll see view to the south, where you'll see a home on the other side of twelve sixteen, which is much more. Uh, boxy and cumbersome than what we're, we are proposing. Um, now I understand that um, Ms. Bulis, um, sorry, my apologies. I understand Ms. Bulis has concerns with leakage and rain, and um, I will say that the east trough, in its entirety, and all water will be on our own property. Um, as you know, when we go through the building permit stage, we do have to provide a lot grading and drainage plan, which has to be adhered to. Um, the trees, the trees are, whole, are solely on um, the property of 1216. There are two trees in the back on her property, which we will not be touching. We will not be obstructing. Um, we will actually provide protection around it so that um, you know, there is no damage to the trees. And uh, the, you know, the, in, the, in the letter, there was also made comment about um, ice. Um, ice damming, as we know, if the roof isn't insulated properly, then yes. However, you know, these will be two brand new homes, which will be built in accordance to um, the OBC codes of today, which will have very high uh, grading of insulation. So ice damming will not be occurring. And as for rain, the eaves trough, everything will be running off onto our own property and lot grading and drainage plan, plan as I mentioned, will be provided and will be of no um, you know, consequence to um, Ms. Bulis. However, I will ask Ms. Bulis that she takes pictures of that side of her home for her own protection so that you know before construction starts take pictures of you know that side of the home in the event that there is damage then she has something she'll have before and after um photos but as we see in this neighborhood this is something that is going on in this neighborhood uh, you know you I'm, i i know uh, the members through you mr chair the members visit the site and they see that this is something that is um, very characteristic of what's happening in this neighborhood. And I trust and I, I respectfully um, submit, I hope I've answered Ms. Bulis's, um concerns. Okay, thank you, Madam. Does the uh, committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please?
Mr. Chair, I, I'm influenced by uh, two aspects of this proposal. One is its proximity to the Islington subway station and the need wherever possible to promote and encourage intensification uh, with the caveat, of course, that it is uh, in keeping with the character of the neighborhood. And on that point, I noticed that um, this lot is uh, the largest or has more frontage than any other lot on this side of Islington uh, in its block. Um, across the street, there are a couple that may be um, as wide. I say this because the planning department has is, is is expressed a concern about a precedent, but I don't see that being a problem because there just aren't that many lots of this, uh, this frontage. So um, I'm, I'm going to move for approval of the consent with the standard conditions of consent. And uh, I'm also going to move approval on the grounds that uh, uh, the, the minor variances are, in my opinion, minor and meet the other tests under the Planning Act. Uh, and that motion would be subject to urban forestry conditions two and three and conditions set out by the Engineering and Construction Services Department. Thank you, sir. Can I have someone to second that motion? Yes, Mr. Palmer seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. Madam, your application has been approved, uh, subject to urban forestry and development engineering conditions. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair, members. Have a nice Thank evening. Thank you. We're now on item number 37. That is 25 Roseland Drive. I have two people registered to speak. I have the agent, a Chris Marchese. Are you there? Yes, Mr. Chair, I am here. Can you hear me? Yes, can I get your full name and address, please? Yes, full name is Chris Marchese. Um, address is 900 the East Mall, Suite 300. Okay, thank you, sir. I have a uh, report from city planning dated the 1st of February. Uh, it seems that, uh, that there was an earlier report dated January 21st, uh, 2021, asking for a deferral. Am, am I correct, Mr. Carvalino? Mr. Chair, yes, you are correct. There was a, an issue with the notice. Staff noted, uh, noted it early in the process and rescheduled it for today. So that's why you see uh, revised okay. notices. All right. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I do, I'll just refer to this report from city planning and another report dated the 1st of February of this year. Uh, staff was recommending the following variances be refused. Variance number three for the proposed lot coverage of 40.14% the lot area. And variance number four for the proposed gross floor area of 0 0.89 times the area of the lot. Have you had the opportunity to uh, review that report, sir? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, yes, I have had the opportunity to review the comment from city planning and would like to speak on that. Um, those two variants specifically um, in the presentation, if possible, um, to okay. try to provide some justification towards the committee members. Okay. Uh, so you would you would like the uh, you would like the committee to deal with your application today? Yes, please. Okay, uh, we have one other person uh, as a deputant. So if you could give us a, a brief presentation on what you see as the merits of your proposal. No problem. Um, good afternoon, um, sir, chair, and fellow committee members. My name is Chris Marquez, the planner at Design Plan Services. We have been retained by the property owners of 25 Roseland Drive to present information on this application in front of you today. Um, further to the comments provided by Mr. Chair, um, the FSI was reduced from 0 0.99 to 0 0.89. Um, included in the zoning examiner's calculation is some parts of the basement and the massing of the dwelling not including the FSI of the basement is at 0 0.8 times the lot area or a very modest um, 2,175 ish feet. Um, variance one is related to lot frontage. The proposed lot frontage on the new lot will be 7.62 meters, where 18 meters is required. I would like to note that the bylaw requirement of 18 meters is for both parts of the semi detached dwelling, and therefore the required variance for each dwelling is 9 meters and not 18. The existing loft fabric in the immediate context 
as well as the surrounding context has multiple existing 7.62 meter lots, which further shows the proposal meets the criteria in section 5124 and is reinforcing policy 4.1.5 of the City of Toronto's official plan. Variance 2 is related to lot area, which is similar to lot frontage. 665 square meters is actually for both parts of the semi detached dwelling, and therefore 332 square meters is a required lot area for each of these severed semi detached dwellings. Um, the lot fabric once again shows that the area, although a little bit smaller than existing lots in, on Roseland, is due to the south portion of the street having a little bit less depth. But the lot fabric lot configuration is consistent with what exists on Roseland and in the immediate area. Variance 3 is related to lot coverage. The proposal requests relief of, from the bylaw to permit 40.14% lot coverage. This has been reduced from previously 45%, which was reviewed by planning. The proposal is compliant with both front and rear yard setback requirements and is, requ and is requesting a 0.3 meter relief for just a portion of the dwelling on the side yard setback where the garage is located. Which means the building envelope, other than the 0.3 for the, for the um, length of the garage, is permitted as of right on the newly proposed lot. The proposed dwelling is modest in size at 2149 square feet with three bedrooms and it is appropriate development and intensification for the proposed lot. Furthermore, the resulting footprint will be in keeping with the existing massing on the street due to the amount of 7.62 meter lots, as well as apartment buildings located at 19, 21, and 23 Roseland Drive. Variance 4 is related to the FSI. The proposal requests a variance to permit a dwelling at 0.89 times the lot area, where 0.4 times the lot area is permitted. At 0.4, the as of right FSI would permit 1,070 square feet. Um, I would like to note again that the zoning examiner has included a portion of the basement within the FSI calculation. And if the basement portion were to be removed, the proposal would be 0 0.80 times the lot area. The resulting bill form would be consistent and comparable from the street with the existing semi detached dwellings at 20 and 22 Roseland, 27 and 27A Roseland. Furthermore, the resulting bit form will appear similar, if not smaller, to the apartment buildings located at 17 and 19 Roseland. Variance 5 is related to the side yard setback. As mentioned previously, we are requesting 1.2 meters where 1.5 meters is required. The variance is only for a portion of the dwelling where the garage is located and is compliant with the 1.5 meters for the remainder of the dwelling. This change is made through consultation with planning staff. Okay, thank you. I only under the. Okay, thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, I'll go to the next uh, speaker on our list. I have uh, Mar Maria Kumer. Are you there? Maria Kumer, are you there? Yes, I am. Yes, thank you, madam. If I could get your full name and address, please. My name is Maria Coomer and my address is 36 Roseland Drive. Thank you, Madam. If you could give us your views on this application. Yes, I asked the Committee of Adjustments uh, to refuse variances 3, 4 and 5. As mentioned, City Planning recommends variances 3, 4 be refused. And so I asked the Committee to uphold Community Planning recommendations. I also asked Committee to refuse variance 5 and the proposal of a flat roof a flat roof uh, and, and height is not scaling character in the neighborhood and immediate context. These variances do not respect or reinforce the physical character of the neighborhood. This is a second committee of adjustment application that has come up around me and I have one more coming. I ask committee of adjustments to preserve the character of the area and to stop a shift in the local physical, uh, local physical character that is not in keeping with the intent of the official plan. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, uh, we'll go back to the agent. Mr. Marchese, you heard the comments from Ms. Coomer, if you'd like to respond. Yeah, through you, Mr. Chair, um, I don't think I need to re-explain my justification for three and four, but if there's any further clarification needed from committee members, I will be happy to answer them. Um, in regards to variance five, um, I know Ms. Uh, Coomer is, um, was a, a participant on an approval at 32 Roseland, which was severed um, into two 7.62 meter lots. 
um, with the side yard setback variance, which she commented on and complained about at that hearing. Um, I am of the opinion that the proposal still meets the intent in terms of the side yard setback and the 1.2 compared to 1.5 has no further impact on Ms. Kumar or her um, lifestyle due to the fact that it's located across the street and a few dwellings over to the west of the subject property. Um, that is my response. Based on that, um, she commented on a flat roof. Um, a flat roof is consistent in the area. Um, immediately across the street at 20 and 22, you will find a flat roof semi-detached dwelling, as well as a little bit further down the street at 31 and 31A. Um, a flat roof is permitted under 569-2013 at 11 meters tall. Um, and therefore, um, individually and accumulatively, um, I am of the opinion that it does meet the intent of the official plan and the other remaining variants with um, tests that need to be met for Section 45.1 of the Planning Act. Um, and I will be happy to answer any questions at this time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Does the committee have any questions of the speaker? There being none, can I get a motion on this application, please? I'll uh, move for approval. I think it's an appropriate infill situation. Uh, I think the applicants provided a good explanation for the uh, frontage and area variances specifically. Um, so the variances requested are minor. The severance is appropriate. Um, so I'll move for approval. Subject to standard conditions. Um, seeing any other conditions in here? Yeah. We have an urban forestry condition. Oh, forestry conditions, yes. Two, three, and five. And the engineering and construction. Yeah, five oh, is two and three. Use. You're right. Okay. Yeah. And uh, engineering and construction uh, conditions and standard conditions. Thank you. Uh, someone to second Mr. Palmer's motion? I'll second that. Mr. Taylor seconds. All those in favor? That motion carries. So your application has been approved subject to. Uh, Development engineering and urban forestry conditions. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Members. Have a great day. Thank you. <laughs> Item number 38, 5365 Dundas Street West. I have one person registered to speak. Uh, that is Michael Kara, the agent. Are you there, sir? Yes, good afternoon. Yes, sir. I just wanted to ask we have a report from city planning dated the 26th of October. They have no objections to your applications, which are, I guess, uh, uh, legalizing some easements and rights of way. And I guess that's correct. I'll, I'll just ask the committee if it has any questions or comments. Um, just to clarify, you've satisfied all the conditions of uh, engineering in terms of the appropriate servicing uh, easements being in place, correct? That's correct. Uh, we addressed in advance of this hearing any comments or requested clarification that engineering and transportation had, and that was clarified in a memorandum that was added to the file dated October 21st from engineering and transportation staff. Thank you, sir. I just wanted to ask, is there anything you'd like to tell the committee that isn't in the material that we have before us this afternoon? Uh, sir, no clarifications beyond what's on the file, um, although I'm happy to respond to any questions that you do you have and I can also provide a brief presentation if necessary. Okay, thank you. Uh, I do have a, a question. Yes, Ms. If I might. Um, it looks like this is already under construction. There's hoarding up around the site. It uh, looks like a large vacant lot according to the satellite view that I took a look at. So can you just, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind a brief presentation if, if, you, if you could. Yes, uh, sir, uh, uh, Ms. Alderson, if you could uh, please give us a very brief presentation on uh, what exactly you're doing. Well, we know what you're asking for, but perhaps go into a little more detail on what you're, what you're doing. Uh, of course, and feel free to step in if you have any questions along the way. Um, I'd ask that you pull up a copy of the uh, KIPP District Master Plan that we filed last week on behalf of the applicant, which would be a, a nice visual aid for the presentation. Thank you. 
Thank you. That's the one. So, uh, Ms. Elderson, as, as you pointed out, this uh, the property forms uh, part of what's commonly referred to as the Kit District, which is a, a general area that's received a, uh, a number of various planning approvals from the former OMB, the Committee of Adjustment, and the City of Toronto. Uh, I'll go through the various parcels that you see on your screen right now. So, amongst these approvals is Phase One of the Kit District at the top left of that plan that you're seeing, which includes a 28-story residential tower that's already been completed as of 2018 and has been condominiumized since that time. Uh, to the east and to the south of phase one, you can see phases two and three of the KIPP district, both of which were approved through an application for rezoning. It was granted by city council in 2018. Uh, phase two, which is where you can see the green and the pink highlighting, is currently under construction pursuant to a site plan agreement entered into with the city in February of last year. Uh, as illustrated on the master plan, phase two contain, contains a 24 story condominium building and a 21 story rental building identified as buildings D and E, as well as publicly accessible open space to the south of the street identified as Samuel Woodway. Uh, to the south, phase three is the subject of a site plan application process of the city and is anticipated to be developed with two residential apartment buildings shown as buildings A and B in accordance with the approved zoning bylaw amendment. Uh, so, with this background context in mind, perhaps uh, I'll clarify the purpose of today's application. Uh, the application proposes to sever the property to allow for the creation of th three separate parcels within the second and third phases of the KIPP district. These lands are identified for, this for the purpose of this application as the phase two rental, phase two condominium, and phase three lands. Uh, in simple terms, the intent and purpose behind the applications are twofold. Uh, firstly, the application for consent for severance is what would allow for the separate financing and mortgaging of these three created parcels, including as it relates to the affordable housing units that are being constructed as, as part of phase two um, in partnership with the city through the open door affordable housing program. Uh, effectively, the pro severances will allow the applicant with flexibility to mortgage the phase two rental building and affordable housing units separately from the mortgage that would apply to the phase two condominium building, which contains retail uses as well as the future phase three development of the KIPP district. Um, I'm, I'm happy to, to go on to speak to the actual easements uh, if that doesn't answer your question. Sir, if I could just ask, I could ask a question. The, uh, of course. What you have up on, what we have up on the screen there is Thomas Riley Road. Is that to be a public road or is it uh, just a, a, a right of way? That a public easement would be granted over that road and it currently exists. Uh, yeah, but is it public or private? Public access. Easement. It's a public access easement. Oh, public access. For so it, it allows it will allow future access to the properties to the west. That's correct. Okay, and is that the same with uh, the roads that extend to the east, which is in part four and part ten? That that's correct. And Samuel Woodway is a, is another street that have similar access rights. Okay, which is okay. just below the, uh, the building D and E that you're seeing on that plan. Okay, thank you, sir. Are there any further questions of the speaker? There being none, could I get a motion on this application, please? Just, I'm gonna make a motion, but I'd like to ask a question too. Certainly. Is this the, is this the old Canadian Tire site? Yes, it is. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I find the variance is minor in nature, meeting all the tests under the Planning Act, and um, my motion is to approve without conditions. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Someone to second that motion? I'm happy to second that motion. Ms. Alderson seconds. All those in favor? Sure. That motion carries. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. If I have a motion to terminate the meeting. I would be happy to make Thank that you, motion. Thank you, Ms. Alderson, and I'll second that. We're, we're done. <laughs> Thank you. Ladies Good evening. And gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Good night, everyone.